And we are live. Happy Thursday, everybody. The day is June 8th. It is 7 p.m. Eastern time. I'm live streaming from Miami, Florida, but we are all over the United States right now. So I want to first say thank you to everybody that's joining us live today. We have a very unique discussion, something that we've never done on this channel before, but something that I promised all of you that we would do. And I asked a special guest to join us on behalf of also Flat Earth Dave, who asked for him to join us. His name is Aaron Abke. So Aaron, I want to say thank you for joining us along with all of you, Jaron, Austin, and Flat Earth Dave. Thank you guys for being here today. And I look forward to the conversation. Excellent. So, Thanks for having us. <laughs> all righty. So, but. Before before we dive into this thing, I want to just set uh, uh, like a vibe for this whole thing because of the amount of like divisiveness around the world with this topic. And I want to do this conversation different. I don't want to bring any of that into it. I don't think that there's any room for any of that in not just this conversation, but all conversations. As you can see, this right here says unified. And unified doesn't mean we all share the same beliefs. It does mean that we all share different perspectives. And then we say, okay, makes sense to me. Doesn't make sense to me. It's all good. We can all be friends. So I want that to really be uh, uh, like a staple of this conversation to whatever and however it ends, whether we all agree, whether we all don't agree, that's not what matters. What matters is we're having an open conversation. Everybody expresses themselves, their points, whatever it may be. And we take it from there and have a good time. So with that being said, this is not about convincing either side. This is about sharing perspectives in a respectful way. I do want to preface with the fact that myself and Aaron, were not experts on this topic. So we're not coming here to say we're proving one side over another. We're coming here simply to listen. I'm sure I'm going to have opinions. Aaron may have opinions and we'll take it from there. We do have a few questions that, you know, we lined up pretty recently of saying, well, what about this? What do you guys have to say about this? Not to convince or prove any side one way or another, just to ask and see how that conversation goes. With that being said, in about a year and a half to two years from now, there's something really, really exciting happening. Some say it may not happen, but I guess we'll see, time will tell. And that's what I call like the grand finale of what we're now starting as this conversation. That grand finale is gonna be happening with two tickets that we actually just got from a company called The Space Perspective. It's supposed to go out in 2025 or 2026. Again, time will tell what happens and how that goes down. But if all goes as planned and everything that I'm being told does happen, then I will be going to space with The Space Perspective to be able to record. I'll be showing all the cameras on both sides. Again, not to prove one side or another just to see from all open sides with a higher message called the higher perspective. And the higher perspective is unity beyond these divisive uh, beliefs that we all hold. Um, one thing I do want to say, I know, Dave, we spoke about this before. I just wanted to lay the groundwork over here. You guys were actually pretty great with it, but I saw other things in some of the movies that I saw. So I just wanted to make sure that Throughout this live, of course, there's no cursing, there's no name calling, forget about us, about other people. I mean, we, we don't, we don't want to bring any of that energy into this. And there is no disrespect, including the comment section. This goes for everybody watching. We're all coming together in a container to be able to sit together and say, let's all hear everybody without any form of negativity towards each other. Unified Social is a good place to be able to speak about topics like this and many others. As you all know, there has been a lot of censorship lately on many topics, including this one. So if you guys do want to speak about that, Unified Social is free through the Unified TV app. You can download it on all app stores, on your iPhones, on your Androids, whatever it may be. And when it comes to Aaron, I know all of you have websites. Aaron has a YouTube channel where he speaks about a lot of spirituality in terms of like higher consciousness explaining many different aspects that's what brought him to me and that's why we've been friends for such a long time make sure to check out his youtube channel make sure to check out flatearthdave.com to see everything that dave's up to with his app and austin and jaron i don't have your information in terms of where we can tell people to look into you guys can you just share that real quick before we dive in sure mine's easiest just jaronism.com best place to find it awesome all. okay and austin What's it gets it on YouTube will probably be the best place. Beautiful. Okay. Now I want to start with one big question for everybody. 
And this is really going to set something awesome because no matter what so-called side you may believe, what beliefs you may hold, we need to ask this question with everything we dive into. And that question is, are you willing to accept that whatever your beliefs are may not be true, no matter how deeply identified you are with them, whether it's a flat earth, whether it's a globe earth, whether it's anything in this world, because that philosophy, that question goes to everything, especially in the times that we're living in, because belief systems are crumbling very, very fast. So are you willing to accept that whatever beliefs you may hold may not be true, no matter how deeply identified you are with them? That's a very deep question that we have to sit with. Let me just- so We're going to dive into- Yeah. Uh, I thought you were done. Um, oh, no, I was going to say, we're, we're going to dive into these questions. I know you want to say something, Dave. Oh, Real was, was that question to us or to the audience? I thought it was to oh, us. Oh, no, no, that, that's to everybody. That's, <laughs> okay. to, that's to everybody. That's to everybody. I was going to say but, that um, uh, flat earthers have done it. We were all globe earthers and we changed our minds based on new information. So we have proven so, that we have that ability. Are you willing to change back if you see other things come to the surface? That's thousand a percent. Question. Thousand percent. Okay. That, that, that's all. That's that's how we know that everybody's on an equal playing field because we got to go into that on all sides of the equation. So the outline of this whole thing, just so everybody knows, is we have a few questions just to ask to start conversations. We're going to spend a few minutes on each question and keep rolling to keep the conversation moving forward. And we'll take it from there. So Dave, I know you want to say something and then Aaron, you take it away and we'll jump in. Yeah, I want to say first, we don't have this is you we're we're hearing the game plan for the first time right here. We did not plan this conversation any farther than we've gone so far. And I want to say well, we're going to be discussing a lot of things. We're going to go out there and up there. We're going to go all over the place and we're going to we're going to speculate and we're going to look at evidence and ideas. But if we want to prove the shape of the earth. Um, we don't have to look any farther than below our feet because we can test right here. And the, there's basically, you know, if the earth is a sphere, it has curvature. And if it's a sphere and spinning in space, it has axial rotation. Um, and I just like to point out that you have to have that and you'd be able to demonstrate how you could have high pressure, our atmosphere, adjacent to low pressure or no pressure space without a physical container. So axial rotation, which has never been measured by anyone ever in history, curvature, which has never been measured by anyone ever in history, and having high pressure next to no pressure or low pressure without a physical barrier has never been demonstrated in lab or in nature. So it's kind of weird that all three of those things cannot be proven, which would be necessary if we had a globe. So I, I do have to say that the only reason why I'm still believing as we speak in a spherical earth is because I've seen evidence to all those things, which I think we can cover. And then let's see what you guys have to say about that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm not, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's always with that thing. So I ask you one question, Jason, just because I saw you talking about the sp space pers perspective. Mm -hmm. That's what, what it's called. Space perspective. Yeah. Right. So I just was looking it up. It, it goes, uh, 95,000 feet only. Correct. A hundred thousand feet to be exact. Yes. Which you called the edge of space, which wouldn't even be close, right? It's not even close. to the it, edge of space, but. it depends where you consider the atmosphere over there. It would be 99% to the atmosphere of the actual, what they call it in the globe earth model. Well, they call it 60, what? 62 miles. No. Space doesn't start at 62 miles. The atmosphere is 99% to that point is the atmosphere to okay. my knowledge. Yeah. And then, I mean, the only thing I would say is if you would, you know, have somewhere we could bet on that, I would bet against that happening because just based off of history that they've announced these things for the last 15 years, there's going to be some coming. They're going to put people up in a balloon. They're going to put people up in a balloon. It's just never happened. So I'm just saying just because another company's come along, said they're going to do the same thing. Uh, I'll just put my two cents in. I doubt it would happen. So that's what we say time will tell. Yeah. If that if that doesn't happen, they're going to owe us a lot of money. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> so we're going we're going to have to see what happens over there. What do you think if if you get there and you see the curvature of the earth from mm. 100,000 feet and then you have Neil deGrasse Tyson saying at 120,000 feet that you would not be able to see curve, what would that tell you? I heard that before, but I looked deeper into it and they've said otherwise at 35,000 feet of what you could see. Whenever I fly to Israel, which is about 40,000 feet, I do see a little bit, but you could say that that's an illusion of the eyes. Gotcha. Okay, good. All right. This is, you want to take it away? This, this is 120,000 feet behind me, just by the way. Got you. 
Uh, Jaron, on that point, I've, I've seen a lot of like commercial space flights that they're doing every few months now was like Blue Voyager and all these companies and Blue I've Origin seen... and, and Virgin Galactic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've seen videos of people going up and, and floating and looking out of the windows and you can see the earth out of the window with the curvature. And I've only ever heard flat earthers basically say, well, it's just all fake. Is that the kind of the position you guys hold on those videos? You'd have to show me which particular one you're talking about. Cause I don't put it past them that they can do like a reverse bungee jump. Right. So what they basically do is shoot something up as high as they possibly can and then let it kind of float down. So that the people get a little bit of time of, uh, what would be zero G no different than a parabolic flight kind of, you get that period of time. So that's what I think they're mostly doing. So I don't know. The one I've seen is the William Shatner video, right? Where he goes up to space. Have you seen that yeah, one? That one, yeah. A lot of people have doubts about that one. He's what ninety years old, ninety-one years old. It just came down. Got uh, as soon as the thing landed, you know, they get this huge jerky motion. But there's no ambulances anywhere near around. There's no medical personnel. It was just very strange. If you had a ninety-year-old man crashing in that craft, you would have an ambulance somewhere near. There's but if no- they were if they were faking it, wouldn't you think that that's the first thing that they would think to do? Well, I don't know what they would do. I, I'm not I'm not faking it, so I don't know if I've ever put together a checklist of really what I would do to fake it. Um, but it just it does seem kind of weird to me that all the rich are the only ones going into space, right? So it's Bezos, it's Elon Musk, it's um, Richard Branson. So they're almost well, it to- is it is very expensive to do something like that. Well, I mean, yeah, the price has gone up versus everything else that's gone down with the technology. It just seems that space is the only thing that's like too hard for people to do. It's just got to be governments and these. Uh, rich billionaires who are the only ones who can go to space. So uh, and what's what's the problem with that? Just out of curiosity. Well, I mean, if you're talking about 1972, we had Pan Am booking flights to the moon. So it just seems like things are moving a little bit slowly. If we're just now starting to get people and we're not putting them in space, we're mm-hmm. throwing them up really high and they float down for four minutes. That's the, that's what people are excited about now is that's space, four minutes of floating time. I, I, that doesn't impress me, not versus what we were told we would be able to see. If we went to the moon 50 years ago, you would think we'd be a lot further along now. Like right now, people cheer like crazy when Elon Musk sends up a rocket and it comes back down and lands, right? But six, 50 years ago, we sent people inside there to the moon. And then it landed. They got out and played golf, got back in it. It launched again, connected with the orbiting craft, came back to Earth, dumped in the ocean. So we shouldn't even be impressed that Elon Musk can land a craft on Earth. Big deal. We landed people on the moon 250,000 miles away 50 years ago. I personally think it has more to do with the fact that elites want to keep all the highest technology to themselves and yes, not I give them to the plebs. More so than, oh, the Earth's flat and they're trying to hide it from us. I think rich people just want to keep advanced technology to themselves. I think that's true. I've often said that it's like, that's why they push STEM, right? They want that corner of them because they, if anybody discovers something or any, they want to be there. They right. want to be there. They, they probably have bases on the moon they don't want us to know about. So they're not going to get that far, <laughs> commercial flights to people like us. Let me, uh, let me just, let, let's, let's dive into one of the, before we get into like the questions, because we have some like big picture questions as well with water and gravity and things like that. Okay. But I have one question that I really want to start with because it actually came to my attention recently. I saw a few videos about it. I wanted to bring it to your attention to see what your thoughts are. So question number one is how does Antarctica get 24 hours of sunlight at certain times of the year if the earth is flat, according to the, the flat earth model? We don't believe that it does get 24 hours of sunlight. It does get daylight. And uh, my uh, understanding of that is it has an interaction with um, the way the way our, our Earth is encompassed. Like, I'm not saying that we're inside of a glass dome, but the light reacts like it's in a dome. Austin, I can pull up some images. You want to jump in on that? You can, you can actually see the sun itself. And there's Have, a video of it that... There's there's four videos yeah. and yes we are saying that they're fake because we've proven that they're fake. Um, here uh, is that. Uh, uh, have you proven this that? Is, this is one of them that I saw. I mean, tell me what Take you guys think. Because take a look. This to me, this to me is. I mean, there's 24 hours of sunlight. Aaron has has friends and I believe family in Alaska that tell him, listen, we've we. There is 24 we've, hours we'll of sunlight in Alaska. North. Yes. Definitely Just to okay. clarify, we 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 know that you can get daylight sunlight but you don't see the sun in the sky for 24 hours on a globe it needs to be the sun's in the sky for 24 hours you can explain with a coffee cup caustic on a flat earth this is one of the fake 
videos actually. And so that's what super take? we found oh. them editing the video and re in like layering the clouds and then repeating. Clouds don't repeat 24 hours after one another. That's one of the biggest sketchy things, actually, is that there should be hundreds of these videos. When you look at the government Antarctic cameras, they never show the sun 24 hours. I know a former NASA employee that was stationed in Antarctica in the time of the year that should see the sun 24 hours that he never saw it once. So doctored footage just makes it even more highly sus. You, you can you can have the light. So if you have if you have people in NASA that are telling you that, but you have other people that are saying the opposite and showing videos, how do we know who to believe? Well, that's right. So an anecdotal evidence, you know, wouldn't mean anything, which is why I I brought that up because you said that somebody says they've been there. Well, I know someone that worked for NASA and was stationed there and said you never see the sun in the sky for 24 straight hours in Antarctica. You, you will see light in the sky, which we don't deny. It's very easy to explain why you would see light for 24 hours in Antarctica on a flat well, Earth. Do we know that all of Antarctica gets 24 hours of sunlight at that That's time true. of the year, or is it a no, certain there, there are points Antarctica is enormous. At a certain point. Yeah, it's, it's a massive. certain portion and a certain time of year that's supposed to get the 24 hours. Yeah, sun. so maybe your friend was at like a different part of the Antarctica that didn't get the 24 hour sun. With we have to verify that, right? Maybe yeah, with yeah, a lower yeah. clearance also, because most right. people don't have clearance so, to go to many places in Antarctica. So that it's a, it's a lot, and we could dive into this for a solid hour, but Jaron's done a bunch of videos where he's contacted um, bases in Antarctica that have their um, webcams that do, uh, you know, just a, a live stream of, you know, the outside in Antarctica. And every single day when there should be 24 hour sun, there was 10 hours cut out of the day, cut out, cut out of the loop. And when he contacted them, Jaron, let them know what they said. Well, they just said they didn't have enough bandwidth to send the full day's worth of footage. So I just told them, because they've got basically like six years of webcam footage, but every day is 10 hours cut off. So I told them, well, you know, people would appreciate if you did three full days and take three days off rather than to be the South Pole webcam. But what do you think people are going there to look at? You go there and there's six years worth of footage, not one day of full 24 hours of footage. Every day is like 16 hours. So Okay, so just, I, I, I haven't reached out to them, so I don't know. But to me, that doesn't constitute that that's the Earth's flat. You know? well, well, no, 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 like the idea is, yeah, if you see the sun in the sky for 24 hours, that's what the globe predicts and how would the flat earth explain that? But that's, that's not what happens. Right. right? Like, that, but we just saw that in the video. In 2015, when we started this, there was none, there was zero videos. So we came out, started talking about flat earth. All of a sudden some videos started to come out and here's even more proof of, of Globers, uh, globe believers, not being skeptical at all. Science believers are no longer skeptical. They belong to a religion. Because what they did is they brought why do, you, up why do you say science believers, though? Because there are certain things in science that's not a belief. It's it's called science because sure, I agree with you. I'm, I'm right. the first one to say that there's been over the past three years a lot of things. Anything right, can become a religion. A lot of things, right? Yeah, but so practical science, things that we can touch, computer science, uh, my phone, my car, things like that that are proven every day are much different than the distance to the stars the size of the sun. I mean, those things are not proven to anybody. You've never measured the size of the sun and neither is anybody, you know, so it's just something that is a belief. That is a belief. You can pretend like, you know, or you think people know, but it is a belief, right? How do you know? Yeah, the but there, the but there are, there are things in science proven that are showing a lot of things when it comes to Antarctica, the North pole, the South pole, the sun, how it moves, the trop the Tropic of Cancer, the Tropic of Capricorn, I mean, what do you mean? I guess I don't know what you mean by things are proven there. What is what is proven about the tropics? I would say through through mathematics, first of all, right? Science tries to back up all theories through mathematics. And if I know you guys would probably say that their models are flawed or or made up or whatever, but the mathematics according to their formulas always check out, which is why we can know the mass of planets, spectroscopy, and all these other sciences. <laughs> Math doesn't work actually. Like when when they use the mass, uh, the gravity for the universe right it's off by 96 percent it's the math isn't even close what do you, what do you mean it, the gravity for the universe what do you yeah like about? when you apply the theory of relativity which is the modern interpretation of gravity mm -hmm. the heliocentric model in the universe right it doesn't account for 96 percent dark matter and dark energy and this was discovered in 1933 that they had a prediction of mass for the galaxies and only one percent of the mass that relativity predicted was observed 
and it's been almost a century and people still just act like gravity is a real thing that's been proven. The math doesn't work at all. Like it's abysmal. It's not even close to work. You can't even get to first base. It's off by 96%. They, they just call dark matter, dark energy, some titles to plug into. The Are you able to show like that 96%? I don't know about that 96%. Yeah, can you show yeah. where you're getting that from? Yeah, of course. Dark yeah. matter and dark energy, um, mm -hmm. they still make up 96%. That's how the science works, right? Is that they don't know everything all at once. They go by wow. succession, right? So first we understand, like with relativity, the famous thing with Einstein's discovery of relativity in 1905 is that he was able to prove the, what is it called? Perihelion orbit of Mercury that physicists were stumbled over for hundreds of years and his relativity formulas figured it out. So I'm so like, what, what would you really, guys say to that? Was that, is Mercury's orbit not as we observe it? Or That's not quite what happened, actually. So like they discovered the perihelion shift of Mercury like 40 years before relativity. And so he knew that he had to integrate that into his explanation. His theory didn't predict anything. He had you to mean, add mathematically entire, they, they solved it. He had to add entire equations with imaginary numbers in the, in the uh, denominator to try to account for Mercury's anomaly. And it still exists to this day. It's called Mercury's anomaly. So it doesn't completely even predict it to this day. It's like a well-known anomaly. It does do better than Newtonian mechanics, which is where you're getting that. And then right. in pop sci articles say relativity did this, and but no, it didn't, it didn't really work. It still doesn't work. It's called Mercury's anomaly. Relativity was invented to explain why the Michelson the anomaly showed the earth was stationary. It, it moves slightly different than the rest of the planets. It basically processes in a different way. It shifts right. in a different direction than it's supposed to based on the gravitational prediction of Newtonian okay. mechanics. I was under the impression I, I, that I, relativity I, mathematically solved that problem. You're saying it didn't solve the problem. No, it, it got closer to working than Newton, but it's still it's still prompt to this day. There, there's okay, different solutions for it, like the Schwarzschild equation, the Kerr metric. They all don't really work. And I just so one thing I'm, you said about it up later. I I'd yeah, like to keep way. if we could if we could keep things in order instead of scattered. I think it would be better for everybody. Yeah, can we go back to the Antarctic thing real quick? Well, can I sure. just finish what you said there? You said that this is the way science works, right? It's progressive and this and that. But what dark matter and dark energy are, are they're place fillers in math, which is absolutely not how science works, right? So science says, Richard Feynman, famous for saying that if you have a hypothesis, hypothesis or a theory and it doesn't meet observations, then it's wrong. And so you're supposed to throw it out and start over. So what they did is they have the gravity uh, equations and they've got that theory. And then when they looked out in the universe and said, oh, it doesn't match, did they throw away the theory? Nope. They said, let's put a placeholder there. Let's call it dark matter. There well, I, must I be think, dark matter there. I think they said it, it does match if there's particles we don't understand yet filling well, that we're space. Not talk, so we're, not, I'm sorry, we're not talking about flat earth anymore. We're talking about principles and philosophies. Yeah, it was the just a rebuttal to the, like, all yeah. the math works claim. Like, it does, it does, the math yeah, doesn't work. Saying. I mean, we can move on from that, but, like, it's that's not true. The math doesn't work at all. Okay. It doesn't. I, I've seen videos that seem to explain the math pretty well, but I'll I'll go back and double check if I miss something. No worries. Well, why don't we Why don't we hop over to water for a second? I know I know that there's a big question on water finding its level, how that whole thing works. Can you guys explain that whole thing? I've seen both sides. Both sides are very interesting. I think Aaron did too. Can you explain just, the whole water finding its level aspect? Sure. Just, just one one last thing on Antarctica. This is uh, time and date put on a, a, an AE map. And this is just a dome where we're moving a light uh, from the Tropic of Cancer to the Tropic of Capricorn back and forth. And when we do, when it goes out to the Tropic of Capricorn, it wraps around. So if you were over here in Antarctica or over here or anywhere and the sun's moving around, it's going to have twilight. This is all twilight over here. Now it's dark. This is dark when it's on the Tropic of Cancer. How is there, how is there, a, um, we'll get to the water thing in a second, but stay there for a second. Go back to your straight line. Dome being the firmament, is that what you're saying? How well, it, no, 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 go, go back to where it's half dark and half light. Can you go there for a second? Yeah, it's coming. Ha half dark and half light. Right. Um, okay. So if it, if it, when, when it's a straight line, right? When kind of, it's in like kind perfect of. position. There you go. Of the 50-50. So when the, it looks like, when it looks like that, the distance of light from the center of where Alaska is on that map versus the distance of light that way is much further, yet it's a perfect straight line. So I'll explain. Right? I'll explain. So just imagine we have the circle of light right here. It, it's, it's right here, right? And it's kind of curving away here. But as it's moving out towards this, towards the, 
the dome, if you will. And this, again, this is just, you know, showing you how reality works with the dome and versus time and date. The light starts wrapping around. So there's a point where you have the wrap and the curve and it all lines up straight. And that's when it's on the equinox. When the sun is around the equinox, it's wrapping enough to kind of straighten out this curved circle. So I'll, I'll turn it back on so you can see what I'm saying, right? So when it curves out, come on, move. When it curves I can out. Can ask a question, Dave? Yeah. Because oh, we're not totally sure how the it, flat earth model works. Um, there's the curve. I've seen a couple different. Right, there's the curve. I've seen and a couple what? models of it. Are we looking down at a dome? Like is the sun outside of the firmament or we're, is it within the firmament? Well, so, when, and, and again, anything up in the sky, we're speculating. I think the sun that we see is not even a physical thing. I think the source of the sun is above or within the firmament. These guys might think something else. Uh, um, Austin, you want to jump in? What, where do you think the sun is? Uh, I think it's actually within different density layers. I think there are seven density layers, just like seven colors to the rainbow, seven chakras. There's seven density layers. That's what the rainbow is, is demonstrating. And it's basically a torus field. It's like an electromagnetic field. So you could say it's a dome, right? And we live inside a sphere and a plane inside the sphere. And there's electromagnetic energy field around us, just like our body. And the sun's within one of those density layers. So it's, so the flat earth model in your mind is, um, sort of like a circle, a flat circle with a torus field going yeah. around it. Yeah. And then the and sun the, is outside of the torus field. It's just in, it's inside in one of the layers. Okay. Right? So like where's I, the firmament then that encapsulates be, us from the water and stuff? The top, the top layer would seemingly contain all what's in within it. Okay. I think so, about if you had like super fluid plasma or something laying up, then that would contain air pressure. Right. So it's kind of like what we say on the spherical model of the Earth's atmosphere is like a gradient of gases that create the insulation and electromagnetic energy holds the gases in place, just like the torus field. So it's kind of similar, but you're just saying it's a flat plane well, rather than a sphere. Yeah, that's actually it's no, I don't think that space is a vacuum. So I think space is fluid. Do you, you think know, space like the, is water or is that the camp you're in? It's, it's fluid. It's definitely fluid light. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if it's, if it's water, I mean, there's 23 different versions of water according to a 2022 Harvard article, right? I mean, what is water? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, sure. Some type of water. Yeah. I like it. Like it. So I don't need the problem with the globe is that it's claiming gravity, not electromagnetism specifically. And it's claiming that it's sitting next to a vacuum, which is insane. It can't be demonstrated ever. I mean, just why not? Why, why, why is that insane? Well, it just can't be demonstrated ever. Like if, if we test it on the surface where gravity is the strongest inside a vacuum chamber, for example, like if I let out gas container in a vacuum chamber on, on the surface, gravity is the strongest. That's because, fill the vacuum putting one, that's because you're putting one right next to another. But when you have a gradient atmosphere going from more mm -hmm. dense to less dense over time, right. the atmosphere gets thinner and thinner and thinner in layers until it right. gets to a point where you get there almost like if you were to go scuba diving and dive a thousand feet in one shot, you'd explode. You'd literally implode and die. But if you do it over time and allow for your body to take into consideration that new pressure over time, over time, over time, your body will be able to go a couple hundred feet down. Right. But the, the problem with that is, is that's Delta X as in a change in pressure, but you need X first. You need the pressure. Like I can create a gradient of gas pressure in a container Right, so if I put a I, if I if I did that and then opened it up in a vacuum, even if the vacuum's up above the gradient, all the gas is going to fill the the vacuum from the bottom all the way up, no matter what. Yeah, but space right. technically is just much, 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 much less dense. It's not technically zero. It's very close to zero. Right. But yeah. when you when you start at the basis of let's say like on ground level or sea level, and you go up, things get thinner and thinner and thinner over time. So but there's need, still a lot of energy you, in space. You need a container to have pressure. We're going to have, a, a, as Austin said, we can have a, a container with um, liquid gas on the bottom and thinner and thinner and thinner gas all the way to the top. But if you put a hole in that container, all of the gas is gone. If you, you know, put a vacuum at the top of that container and then opened it, everything's going to fill that vacuum from the bottom. Not, up. If, e not if each layer is its own container. Uh, where is that? that, 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 that gas, is gas is omnidirectional. It's omnidirectional. It goes in all directions violently to to Zeke equilibrium, second law of thermodynamics. It it doesn't just sit there by itself. They're at, like gas pressure is the energy or force exerted on the walls of a container. 
right? Like that's what gas pressure is. I mean, you can't even have pressure. If space is infinitely expanding in all directions yeah. and what's containing the gas pressure, like, like where, and it, you say it's not completely empty, but it's significantly more of a vacuum than we could ever replicate on the earth. Like we can't even get close to replicating space. On, on, on this level, but first of all, that's hundred percent true. But for example, the pressure on, on the actual ground level, like as we know, when you're in an airplane, inside the airplane, you need a different pressure. And that's correct. It's in a container because we're going from one pressure to another pressure very, very rapidly and quickly. Mm -hmm. But if you had certain ways to gradually move, you wouldn't need to do that. It's just because you're going to that 30, 35,000 foot uh, altitude as you're flying so quick that you need to pressurize the airplane to be. Able what are you, what are you that. saying? If we went slowly up a mountain that we would be able to breathe all the way up to 30,000 feet? No, because our bodies aren't built that way. Oh, I thought that's what you're saying. Okay, sorry. No, 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 I, I, what I don't get though is like I get what you're saying, but it's just a claim, you know. Like it's like, I mean, do we have an really. experiment that can show that? Because if I if I replicate what you just said in a lab, it will fill the vacuum. It will 100 fill the vacuum above it, no matter how much the gradient goes down. Yeah, but in a in a lab, I think I, I understand what you're saying. It's like I, I like replicating things too, but how do we always replicate something of such a magnitude in a lab? Sometimes you can't replicate it to that yeah, level. But Jason, Fair enough, but, we, but Jason, if you had a density tower of gases in a lab on the surface of the earth, that's where the gravity is the strongest. So the, it should work better than space because gravity, the higher you go, the less gravity there is. And even if we just put a minorly low pressure system above it, not a vacuum, not a space vacuum, um, it will violently fill it instantaneously. So are you guys saying that the Earth's atmosphere should be sucked into space? We shouldn't be able to have an atmosphere in the glow model? If the, yeah, yeah, I mean, technically, vacuums don't suck, but it would fill the available space, yeah. Yeah, right. Like, we wouldn't be able to keep the atmosphere is what you're saying. But Earth, mm -hmm. again, if I know you guys don't believe in gravity, but if gravity, the theory Why of gravity... Why don't we... Well, let's go to gravity on, but Theoretically, on if, if gravity existed, like they say, and it was strong enough, then yes, it would be able to hold the atmosphere to the Earth. But the problem is we right. can test that. And we know that it doesn't, that gravity will just fill the vacuum. Can you sorry, explain how you test it? Like we said, if you take a gravity chamber here on Earth and you put like inside that gravity chamber uh, a box with, of air, right? Then you evacuate the whole chamber. So all that's left is the box of air. If we electronically open that, it's going to immediately fill the vacuum. It's not going to be held down by gravity. Can you explain what a gravity chamber is? So a, a, a room that we can suck the air out of. You mean a vacuum chamber, a vacuum chamber. Sorry, sorry it's, it's a, it's a oh, okay, vacuum. gotcha. Right? So you're but saying then, if you put gas into a vacuum chamber, what happens? So if we had a small box of just air, right? And then we evacuate the entire chamber so that all that's left is a small box of air. If we open that electronically, the air is going to fill the vacuum. It's not going to sit on the earth, which it should, because gravity is the strongest at the earth. And then also that's a barely a small amount of air it needs to hold. Okay, but the way that you can replicate it is just by going to the top of a mountain. If you go to, you know, in, in Cusco, let's say, it's going to be harder for you to breathe. When I was in Colorado that, at a 14,000 right. altitude, one second, when I was in Colorado at a 14,000 altitude, it's literally a different thing that you're breathing in, working with. Nobody disagrees with that. Nobody disagrees. So, so if you brought a box of air back from the top of that mountain, so it's a, it's less dense air, right? And then you, you're you sitting at home and you stuck your head in that box, it'd be hard to breathe because it's it's the air from up high. But if you put that box of thinner, less dense air in the vacuum chamber, evacuated the chamber and then opened it, whoosh, it's going to fill the chamber instantaneously. I, I don't know if that's true. You think the gravity would hold the air on the, at the bottom? No, I think it's, it's, again, I've never done that actual thing, but big time, I mean, like big picture when it goes to different air pressures, we're trying to isolate one from another in the atmosphere of a different one. So if you're trying to take air, let's say, and again, we're, I'm not a scientist, so I don't want to pretend to be one, but based on how, you know, my personal experiences of being on top of a mountain, first of all, how do you take air and isolate it completely? And then when you take that air and isolate it completely, how does that isolated air or pressure or whatever it is, you know, actually remain isolated? And well, how is it impacted in a different pressurized system when you're bringing it back down to earth? I don't know those questions. I was just making the example. Questions. doesn't matter how much air is in you know, the box of air. You got a fiberglass box of air. It's completely sealed, whether it's low pressure, whether it's taken from the top of Mount Everest or from the, you know, 
at the Death Valley, it doesn't matter. You put it in a vacuum chamber and you put the smallest crack in that thing, it's going to fill the chain. It's just going to- that, That's true. Evacuate. That's true. But if right. you were to create a gradient between that chamber and the space outside of it to meet itself to itself from that pressure to that pressure, then it wouldn't do that. I really think you have to think about what you're saying there. I mean, it's, it's, okay. it's a stretch because, you, I mean, it has to equalize. So you're basically saying that it's just such a- you know, minute changes the whole way that there's never an equalization that needs to happen. It's just always right next to the, I mean, it just, to me, you're going to have equalization all the way down. Well, it's like nothing is right next to the vacuum of space because it's a gradient from high density to low density. So each layer successfully taking more pressure off the bottom layer as you move up in the gradient, right? So don't they that's have to one way I see it. Go ahead. Don't they have to equalize if you've got, you know, you've got two different pressures next to each other, right? I, I see like what yeah. I mean is you don't have two pressures next to each other because it's a gradual gradient. So there's no point where there's a, one pressure next to another. It's a spectrum, right? Well, is there a uh, atmosphere to just go forever infinitely into space? Is there like no end to it? I mean, it just until it reaches zero gas. Yeah. I mean, isn't that how the flat earth model works? No, no, there's some a type of physical, gradient, right? There, there's some, something physically containing it and it's not next to a vacuum yet. Yeah, like, this is the problem is that gas always seeks equilibrium, right? It's like just a natural law, the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy will increase. The gas the gas will mm -hmm. violently fill the available space. Like that's what that's what all nature shows us, right? Is that everything seeks equilibrium. Heat goes to cold, high pressure goes to low pressure. So so the lower pressure is going to is going to allow the force like gravity, pressure. right? Pulling it into the center of the oh. sphere. When we right. test it, where gravity Let, is Let's go to gravity. Work, so I think that, that's going to be it. Let's go to gravity. Let's do it. That's <laughs> Austin, a good Austin, give them uh, just a quick rundown on what we think gravity is, and then I'll show a couple graphics, Zach's test, and a couple other examples of what you're talking about. Go ahead. Sure. So uh, gravity, everything's actually electromagnetic. It's all electric. There's a downward electric current on the Earth. Um, it's really weak, but it sets the up and down. It's coming from the sky down to the earth. You can go out and measure it. And then everything that exists is electrostatic, all matter, rubber, glass, all insulators, anything you can name is electrostatic. And that's 10 to the 39th power stronger than gravity's even claimed to be. Right. And so things seek equilibrium and go down to the ground relative to their charge and the charge within the medium. And that's what gives you weight, mass and density all is specifically electrostatic. So in a really brief summary everything's intrinsically electrostatic it's just electrostatic ac acceleration and that's way stronger than gravity claims to be and it's actually testable and provable as opposed to undefined gravity that no one can even agree on to this day so so i like that austin because jason and i are kind of in that camp that um i don't know of course i'm not a scientist but it seems very likely to me that what we call gravity is the effect of electromagnetism and so my my question with the atmosphere is couldn't also like you mentioned there's the torus field around the planet would, wouldn't it be possible that the electromagnetic energy field around the globe would be keeping the gas pressure in as well? Like, to me, that seems entirely possible. Yeah, the only problem with that is the current model has the uh, Van and Allen radiation belts and the electromagnetic field going out so far into space that it's far beyond where the gas pressure needs to be contained. Right. So it's way beyond. That's why they don't use that. They don't they don't use the electromagnetic field to contain the gas. They also can't use it for gravity for quite a few reasons, but they claim that space is a vacuum. And so it can actually yeah. make the planets move around I, each other. I think that it may only be measuring one of Earth's magnetic fields, because just like you mentioned, the chakras, every chakra, as you probably know, has its own torus field and they get wider on the higher chakras outside the body. I think Earth mm -hmm. probably has thousands of magnetic fields that we just don't have the instruments to measure. And so maybe more of the inner magnetic fields are keeping the atmosphere. And I mean, it could honestly work that way for the flat earth model and the round earth model. So like, let, let me, uh, let me just jump in here for a second. So right here, we have some party balloons holding up this little button and this goes to a Van de Graaff generator. We're going to add a positive charge to it. So we're not adding more weight to it. We just made it a little more positively charged. Now the earth is in neutral or negative charge. Positive, everything in the sky is a positive charge. So when we add a positive charge, it goes down. When we discharge it, it goes up. Right. So here's the opposite. We add a negative charge to this. As long as we keep the negative charge in there, it goes up. So are we defining gravity or are we defining the electrostatic um, electrostatic charge of the Earth? One more real quick. This is MIT created what's called the silent drone. There, there's no moving parts on it. There's no propellers. There's no nothing, no strings. It's just changing the electro 
uh, static force of the um, charge of this, and they, they can manipulate it and fly it. So are we defying gravity or are we defying the electrostatic charge? Now, Austin made a comment before that, um, that the electrostatic charge is 10 to the 36 power stronger than, than um, gravity. Well, 10 to the 36 power is a number that is so ridiculous the human mind can't even fathom it, right? If I um, tapped you on the head with my finger, it would, wouldn't hurt. But if I did it a million times harder, it would probably kill you. If I did it a billion times farther, it would, it would probably blow up the whole room. And if I did it a trillion times harder, everyone would die within 100 miles, okay? Just because of the impact of the force. That's 10 to the 15th power, okay? Now you just add the rest of those zeros on. So if gravity was real and the electrostatic force is what science, the globe believers say it is, how would you ever assume something goes down because of gravity, which can't even be measured next to the ridiculous electrostatic force that can be tested, measured, observed, and uh, repeated, where gravity, um, there is no test for gravity. Nothing works. You know, it's, it's nice that you bring that up because technically they don't actually know what gravity is. That's a fact. Because they made it up. Because they made it up. You know, during but, their no, talk, I think I think I think what they're referring to, though, to be fair, because yeah. I do have to say they don't know what gravity is. We know that they're still figuring that out. What they're calling that thing that they don't actually know how it works is whatever that electromagnetic force is that's pulling things down. So what is pulling things down then? Like if I take this phone, right, and I drop it, it goes down. It doesn't go to the left. It doesn't go right. It doesn't go up. If, it, so had a, if you had a bias to go down, right, because electrostatics, wouldn't the actual weight itself cause it to go down? Wouldn't the, it's more dense than the medium, right? Your phone is much more dense than the air around it. So it's going to then go. Then why wouldn't my, my phone is also more dense than the air to the left to it. And yeah, but, it, but, but it's not trying, the way that you just it, said. It, because the bias is down. There's a flow down of positive to negative energy into the ground, a testable, measurable. Because of the earth's charge you're saying. Yeah. 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 Like, you know, you ground things into the earth. You I agree with that. You can take a generator outside and just tie a string to it. And it'll literally run just from the air because there's a current that goes down to the ground. That's what sets the up and down. That's why your phone goes down. Anybody that has a drone, get a thin copper wire, a long wire, run your drone up into the air and then don't touch that wire because it's going to be filled with electricity. Right. Mm -hmm. there's, there's electric. For, Good. I think for Jason and I, like, it doesn't really matter if you could totally disprove gravity here on this live. Like to us, that doesn't mean the Earth's flat. You know what I mean? Like electromagnetic energy to me can explain basically any phenomenon. So like in the flat Earth model, like there's there's so many questions that Jason and I would have for you guys. No, no, no. But would it make spheres? That, I, I don't know. I do. I do need to understand the whole electromagnetism. I know with electromagnetism, I think Dave, you sent me a video of you doing this or somebody else of something levitating in place through electromagnetism. And we know, right? Yeah. No, but not. Yeah. Okay. Not with a drone with propellers. I'm talking about literally. Yeah, it has no propellers. Space. This is okay, no beautiful. propeller. That's so, static. Yeah. So yeah. through that, that's that's basically defying the laws as we know them, because it's like, what is that? So we yeah. understand that through electromagnetism, that's possible. My question, and I think I might have asked you this, Dave, but I don't remember the answer. My question was, if electromagnetism can defy the laws of physics, I'm doing that on purpose, right? The laws of physics as we know it to make this phone float, then why can't it make water stay on a sphere? You can't replace gravity with electromagnetism for many reasons. The globe no, I'm can't to, I'm, I'm, throw gravity to the garbage. Let's talk about electromagnetism. Why, if yeah. electromagnetism can make this phone levitate, then why can't it make water stick to a surface pulling downwards to the center of something? If it pulls the water onto a flat surface, why couldn't it pull water onto a spherical surface? Yeah, so there's a bit of a misunderstanding here. So we don't we don't think that any there's a immense force pulling anything down. Hmm. So there's electromagnetism and there's electrostatics. Truth be told, this is one of the biggest deceptions in mankind history, and no one understands elect the, what that word means. But I'm not going to like turn this into like, a, let's take two hours to redefine electromagnetism. So I said that because everyone knows it really it's electrostatics. We don't think that a major force is pulling everything down to the earth. The electric current just sets the up and down. It's incredibly weak overall, but compared to gravity, it's like insanely strong, right? That's the, that's really thing. The weight, Density, mass, that's why things seek equilibrium relative to that. You uh, Charge gets transferred from the medium to the object. Well, why so, do you say it's weak, though? 
Why do you say like it's a in, weak charge? In, in comparison to electromagnetism, it's weak. Like no, 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 no. Why do you say that the static charge is weak? Because you said it's it's huge compared to gravity, but it's relatively yeah. weak. Like relatively yeah. weak compared to what? You know. To just like other other uh, forces such as electromagnetism, right? Like when I scoot my feet on the ground and touch you, like it'll shock you, but you're fine. If I mm. like shocked you with electricity, which is much more coherent, right? You're not going to be fine. So like in, in the grand scheme of things, compared to like electricity or electromagnetism, it's weak, but it's way stronger than gravity's claimed to be on this this smaller scale, our local scale, everything that we observe. And, and I... I during during yeah, electrical but, but storms, before, thing, things fall. Before at we keep rates. going, though, before we keep going, I just want, I want to understand the answer to that question of again, why can't water? If, if that electromagnetic field, we we can also measure it as torsion fields in some ways. That's kind of like how creation works as we know it. So with those fields that are spherical in nature, why can't they hold water in a spherical form? Because then that goes to the whole the the next question that I had of the the uh, water finding its level thing, which I'd I'd love to hear you know your thoughts about that. Yeah, I'm not going to say that in theory you couldn't get water to bend with electromagnetism because you can you can also with electrostatics, but to get it to adhere to a sphere that spins in a vacuum is a totally different thing. Like like uh, you can't invoke electromagnetism for the current globe model at all. It can't be in a vacuum. It can't sustain the electromagnetic field needed to actually bring things to the Earth in a vacuum. That that's why they don't say that. So we can't just like fix the model by saying, well, they don't understand gravity. Let's replace it with electromagnetism. It's not that simple at all. You couldn't even get the planets to move around each other because it's a vacuum. So like that's the problem. You, we can't just fix didn't the you, globe. Didn't you say earlier that space? Uh, you personally don't believe that space is a vacuum. No, it's like it's like clearly not one. Yeah. So why are you calling he's, it a vacuum? He's talking about the, the globe, globe model. The globe model says it is one. Like I'm saying, we can't just fix the globe model by saying, "Oh, we didn't understand gravity and it's actually electromagnetism." That won't work. It has to change the whole model. Everything has to change. There has to be a more dense fluid-like medium that can sustain the electromagnetism. Seemingly, things would have to be finite and much closer. Uh, you could have plasma. You could fix a lot of problems with electromagnetism, but you have to change what space is. And we now that get, draws into question, well, who, whoever claimed to go out there obviously wasn't being too honest get, with it. We can get by this conversation because we're going to prove that water doesn't bend. There's no such thing as bendy water. Large bodies of water at rest need containment and they lie flat, right? So if you had a pond, the pond needs containment. It needs a shoreline that goes all the way around that's higher than the water. Okay, that's a pond, you know, and a lake is a bigger pond and the world oceans are a giant lake. Okay, and Antarctica is the highest land on Earth. Isn't that weird? Okay, that's not true. That's not true, though. That's not true. On on average, on average, that's not true. The average height elevation of Antarctica, because I saw that point is twenty five hundred meters. That's about eight thousand feet. The highest point in Antarctica is about, I think, either thirteen or sixteen thousand. Thirteen thousand. The highest point on Earth. Is twenty nine thousand feet. That's yeah, but on average. on average, the plateau is like if you like go land to mass is what you're the saying. Land, the land yeah. mass, yeah, it's it's a yeah. higher, it's it's a good container. It's the shoreline of our world pond. It's not an ice wall like Game of Thrones, right? So get that straw man out of the way. Um, and <laughs> it's just the it's just the shoreline that contains our ocean, right? And the question is, what's out here? We can speculate that uh, that a little bit later. But I, I want to get by the curvy, bendy water issue um, with. We can see too far. Now, if there's a curvature of the earth and it's a ball, it's a physical curvature. You cannot see my mouth. Zooming in is not going to bring it back because it's behind a physical curvature. And people, you know, we're trained to say, oh, well, boats over the horizon. That proves it. But then 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 we say, well, we can't measure the curvature. And then they teach us, well, that's because you're an amoeba and it's so small. The earth is so big. You can't measure curvature, but we can see boats go over the horizon. Right. So. On the globe model, the actual correct formula for curvature would say that at three miles, there's six feet of drop. That means somebody standing at the calm at the edge of calm water, perfectly calm water on a perfectly clear day should not be able to see the surface of that water beyond three miles because it's dropping behind a curve from where their eyes are. The six foot of curve, they're not going to be able to see any farther. They stand up. Maybe they see a little bit farther. Okay, so. You mean like a six foot tall person a standing on the tall person at the edge at the edge of a, a lake cannot see the surface of the water beyond three miles if the earth was a globe, but we can see it way farther than that. We have 
we have many, many pictures um, and videos showing showing that. For example, um, just a, a real quick one. Um, where is it? This um, one's tough for me, man, because whenever I watch debate videos on this topic, like, you know, whoever the flat earthers debating will always show that flat earthers just do the math really, really poorly on this subject. And also because the earth is oblong, it's not a perfect sphere. So you're not calculating the the width of the earth. And there's all kinds of different anomalies. It's, all, it's, it's also the, cir the, cir the circumference isn't based on any of the land mass. The circumference is well, based at sea level only. Well, this, that this we're talking over area. the water because yeah, okay. because a, a, a six foot tall person, if there's any waves or any uh, visibility issues, the horizon could never get farther. It could only get closer. Like in a fog, you can only see a little bit of a distance, right? If there's waves, those waves are going to block the water in the distance. So it's only going to get closer. So on a perfectly calm, flat, perfect, clear day, it's three miles, but we can see farther. Here's a camera, a foot off the water. This rig is 9.4 miles away. There should be, according to Globe Map, the Pythagorean theorem, unarguable, um, 59 feet of curvature. Not only can we see the rig, we can see the surface of the water for miles and miles and miles beyond it. That's a problem. But I got a clearer one for you that, that's going to be um, harder to, to, uh, to defend. And this one, the science community is silent on it. So this is a, uh, a, a shot uh, 700 miles. There's a whole bunch of mountain peaks over here. Now, if we saw one, you could argue, well, that's a cloud that happens to be in the exact spot and is the exact same shape as, the, as that mountain. But we can see all seven mountains. Okay. Or is, can we is it pause seven? you here, Dave? Because can we pause you here? Because Jason yeah. and I have watched that video. Yeah. Um, so my first response would be like in the same way that you guys would say, like any video of people in space showing a curved earth is fake. Like I could just say go, someone go photoshopped do this. those. Go do mountains. it yourself. No, go do it yourself. Right. Like I would <laughs> have, have you, to go have you done it? Do it myself to I, verify. We have we have lots of other videos, other people that we know personally that have done it. I've done it myself. That's how I became a flat earther. I was trying to debunk flat earth. I went out and bought a Nikon P900 when it first came out. I went down to the water's edge and I zoomed in on a buoy that was just over 10 miles away. At 10 miles, there should be 66 feet of curvature. And I said, well, this is impossible. The earth is a globe. How the heck am I seeing this? I said, well, the curvature formula is wrong. So I went to the debunking sites. I'm like, okay, they, they, they have to know. And they came up with this ridiculous formula that said, oh, you're sharing the curve. And, uh, you know, and it, it's half. And so, it, which is ridiculous. Uh, it's not refraction. I am looking Maybe. at this buoy. It is a clear, calm day. Science is complex, man. Yeah. Like we got to be, so, we got to be humble as we approach these topics. So, you know, that maybe we don't know everything. We don't have the science perfect, right? Yeah. By the way, Dave, the top of that mountain in the video that you, because I, I saw that video. Yeah. You don't see the whole mountain. Of course not. Why not? Why not? Because well, it's supposed uh, to be forty miles below the Earth curve. We yeah, should no, see no, no, anything like, why close do we to just no, but I'm saying if it was flat, you should see you the should whole see the mountain. whole mountain. All the no, entire things mountain. change no. angular this size. Yeah, no. yeah. What do you angular size? Yeah, you, things change angular size in the distance and the at the closest. What is part what is there. angular size? Yeah, like just like I if I walk, if I I'm six I'm six one. If I walk down the football field, I'm gonna look like I'm getting smaller. Right. But I'm not. But I would still see your feet. No, your feet. Your feet will disappear first. Right. Your feet will disappear first. Right. Your feet right. will disappear so, first. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. There's two. There's two parts of why. So there's like the the most dense part of the atmosphere is at the bottom, so that causes atmospheric occlusion sooner than above it because it's more dense. And your line of sight goes out. What's at the bottom is closer to your line of sight. So as as you converge to your angular limits, the bottom hits your line of sight first. Right. So that's why that reaches the visual limit of your line of sight first. So things disappear bottom up on a flat surface and you, you can test this. I mean, we've tested it. So. So like when you see videos of boats going bottom, going down bottom up behind the horizon, right. so, you're saying that also works on a flat earth model. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And, then, and then I pull my infrared out and I can see the boats bottom again. Yeah. So, so, so I've never seen that if I take a, a telescope, Right. I used to have a big telescope that I would look at like Saturn and Jupiter and all that with, which by the way, Saturn, you can actually see its rings. Yep. That's your proof that Saturn is actually around the rest. You can argue. We don't actually know it could be an illusion, but Saturn, I personally saw its rings with my own eyes going around. So that no doubt has I to think be it's around. over there in my, in my opinion there. Yeah, right? I want to talk to you about that then. Yeah. Yeah. But one right. second, one second before Let's that, stay on this. if I were to take that telescope, like, why don't I see 
a very, very far away land? Why does it stop there we have with a huge telescope right? that, that you can see much, much further? The atmosphere blocks what you can see. You're not going to be able to see farther than 500 miles, probably, it, especially ground level. Maybe if you get up a little bit well, higher. Well, you then how is he seeing a mountain 700 miles away? Well, because he's up higher. Yeah. So because... when you're up higher, you're above the murky part of the atmosphere, right? The most dense part of the atmosphere. So I'm talking about ground level. I don't know if we've seen much. Uh, maybe that 600. There's a good one. That's kind of ground level. Yeah. So this is ground oh, level. But this, hold on. This hold on, problem, hold on hold, Aaron, hold on. Let me let me say this. This is with infrared. Turn off the infrared, and all you see is blue sky. You don't see the mountain, right? See and so the glober will say, "Well, that's because it's behind the curve. You know, the very tip of this mountain should all all we should only see the very tip of it. There's seven thousand feet of curvature from this location, right? So that that's infrared that shows that. But let me show you why we can't see forever. Hey, leave that up real fast, real fast, Dave. Leave it up real fast. This okay. is a part I've never heard anyone ever that defends the globe explain to me. So infrared decreases refraction because of the length, the, the wavelength. So and infrared has less refraction because of the wavelength. So how come I can see further when I pull out infrared if the globe is telling me I'm seeing stuff refracted over the globe? So when I pull out infrared, I should see less of the stuff. But I we all, that's where we see the mountains way far in the distance is in infrared. Can you repeat that again? I, I'm just trying sure. to remember. So like the glow, like when we go out, we see this mountain from a hundred, few hundred miles away. They say, oh, well, it looks like the mountain's there, but it's refraction, meaning that the mountain's actually below the curve of the earth, but it gets lifted up mm -hmm. optically, right. right? And it looks like we see it. So then we pull out infrared and we can see further. So it, what, what should happen is I should see more of the mountain blocked because infrared cuts down on refraction. Can you well, guys we don't. show we like further. pictures of, of seeing further with infrared to like demonstrate that? Oh, there's hundreds, yeah. of them, hundreds yeah. of them. On my app, which I'll show you in a moment, there's a we can see too far section and it's all done there. And again, don't believe a YouTube video. Look at it and do what I did. Go out and buy the equipment and go do it yourself. Okay. But we've done the yeah, work. Totally. You, right. There's, there's tons of stuff. This is a spot. But I'm that, still confused on the mountain part real quick. Uh, hold, you said that because of the atmosphere is more dense at the bottom. That's why you don't see the whole mountain, but looking up from the 3000 feet or whatever he's looking at, it should look like a peak of a mountain floating in the air and the bottom is just hazy and covered by the dense atmosphere, but that's not what we see, right? We see a tip of a mountain peaking over the horizon. Does that make sense? Yeah. That, yeah. That's not what you see. So, and, and things. Oh, yeah, get, I thought it was. <laughs> well, I'll, yes, I'll show you, me too. Me too. I'll show you some, some compression, how things get compressed and, Things at the bottom have the lowest angle to your view. Things up top, up high, you can see much farther, okay? Because you have a better angle. And as they go, everything just compresses lower and lower into the mountain. Here, out here, it's 175 miles from this spot in the Luzier, France, and Canigou Mountains out here. But according to Globe Math, the very top of the highest peak on Canigou should be well over a half a mile below the curve. Well, you can't see it, okay? Now, you don't see me. You see the light that's bouncing off of me. And my camera's right here. And it's not far for the light to travel, but the light that's bouncing off of Mount Kanagu is too weak to push 185 miles through the soup of the atmosphere. And so you just can't see it. Now, the sun is much brighter. Okay. Now, the sun migrates in between the two tropics each year. And twice a year, it lines up with Mount Kanagu and that viewing spot. And when it does, the sun goes into the distance, and as it goes into the distance, it backlights Mount Canago. Okay, so here's Mount Canago. Here's all of the mountain. Now you can, can say, well, where's some of the bottom? Well, you got to remember the top is supposed to be over half a mile below the curve, right? And it's because the bottom is compressed. And there could be little waves here in the, in the halfway to Mount Canago that'll block half of the mountain. Okay, just little waves. Waves little that'll tiny. block half the mountain? I will show you. I'll show you. Yeah, because when it when it's further away, something right. small looks and, much better. Can bigger. my right, finger block my whole giant face? portion of the mountain in Aaron, the picture? Aaron, can my finger block my face? Can your finger block your face? Yeah, now it can. Depending but when it's over, when it's over here, right? No, no, that's not what I'm arguing against. Yeah. So what I'm saying, I'm saying is, half the mountain, like you, because hypothetically you should see the whole mountain from the bottom up. But you're saying because of angular, whatever, you don't see the bottom, you just see the tip, like on a round earth model. So how, how could a wave block out half of a mountain if it's a flat plane? I'll show you. But a round earth model would have no mountain. Yeah. Right. By there 40 would be no miles. Mountain. There'd be no mountain. Right. So out here, you don't see this boat, but as we go in and we make it bigger and bigger, 
there comes the boat. Now I'm not going over the curve and you can clearly see that it's not over a curve, right? But we can't see the water much past the boat because these little waves and these waves here, like my finger will end up blocking the whole boat. And then imagine a city getting smaller and smaller behind those waves and it will just disappear. Only when the water's perfectly calm and there's no haze and that, you know, but when there's haze, it all gets mushed together. It all compresses, right? So as we're mm -hmm. zooming in, we're increasing our angular size. And as we increase our angular size, we reveal there's a boat. But when we zoom out, oh, it's over the curve. That's what a global person would say. It's over the curve. But you only see like half the boat. You can see the whole boat. It's in water. Here's the whole boat. How far is that? Watch boat? it disappear from know? the bottom up. Watch it disappear from the bottom up. It's disappearing from the bottom up now because we have, and it's gone. It is. And now, it's if, in if water, that was the so boat just sailing the... away, you'd be like, oh, it's going over the curve. That's the horizon. Right. But have you guys not seen like tons of videos of boats disappearing from the bottom up? There's not tons. I've seen a bunch. So how many is I, a bunch? Have you zoomed in on at them? least six? Okay. Well, I went out. There. What I did was I, the reason that flat earthers exist, by the way, bro, is people went out on the earth and like, we're just like, well, we'll just debunk it and prove the globe. I went out and looked at boats and then I zoomed in, brought them back. I went out and looked at boats and then looked at it with the infrared. I could see more of the boat in infrared. My infrared's not x-ray vision. I didn't see through the earth. So what that proves is there's something in the atmos that's actually causing the obstruction combined with angular resolution and compression. And it makes sense. Then you look back in the old times when they thought that the earth was a sphere because of that reason. Well, I can get that because if you go out and before you look through your camera, you observe it with your eyes, it looks like their boats are disappearing. It looks like they're going over the edge. So I would tell everybody back in those days too, oh, it must be a sphere because it goes that way, disappears, and they still come back and they didn't fall off anything. So it must be a sphere. But now our optics are gotten to the point where we can know the distances these boats are away. We shouldn't see them anyway. We're zooming in and pulling them back more. And then people always say, oh, well, eventually you won't be able to pull it back. Well, yeah, eventually your zoom runs out and the boat's going to fizzle into the atmosphere. Right. Right, we have. I mean, you you could you could say that, or yeah. or it's going below the atmosphere, uh, below the horizon. Sorry, we can okay, test so, it though, bro. So, on a, here's a question, Aaron. On a globe, you're looking out at the horizon. If you go up higher, you could see a little over that curved horizon, right? And the higher you right. go, the farther you can see to a point, right? To a point, you can't see mm -hmm. below the Earth. Okay, right. so here's the the Red Bull space jump, and this is what they showed us on TV. And look at the curve; mm -hmm. it's amazing, right? But this is all New Mexico. All of this is New Mexico. We went in, we zoomed in, and we looked at the rivers and everything. This is New Mexico. I didn't know that New Mexico covered a quarter of the planet, right? But here's the problem: they uh, they did two Red Bull space jumps before um, test ones, and they had uh, regular cameras. And they said, you know what? For the real one, we're going to put GoPro with with um with uh, fisheye lenses on it, but they forgot to change the one, or they either forgot or didn't for a reason, um, to change the one inside. And when we look at it, um, here is Felix getting in, and here's the horizon right here at ground level. And here's Felix when he was about to go out, and here's the horizon at the same, at the same level, right? It, 127,000 feet, and the horizon didn't drop. Right here, same camera. Here's the horizon. Because it's, it's a sphere. So you're just seeing farther around the backside of the sphere. No, no, no. It's going to drop. The reason you could see farther around a sphere is because it's lower and you're seeing, you're seeing over it. The higher you go, the more it's going to drop. If anything, it's not going to stay at eye level. It's going to drop. Now, if we want to compare them to what you know, Google Earth says, um, it, it... Can I rebut that real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Like, again, here's where we have to like bring a little humility in, right? Because we can't know that it didn't drop. It could have dropped an uh, insignificant amount to the naked eye. What's the drop? Like, how this do we amount? know based on a this, picture? You know what I mean? What it, that this it is what it's drop supposed to all. drop. This is what it's supposed to drop. Based on what equation? Based on what? Like the based radius on, value. Based on the radius, though, that do you know how they came up with the radius, by the way? Are you no? Can you tell us? Now, Austin, can you tell them? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, of course, you got the story of sticking sticks in the ground, getting circumference. And then Al Biruni looked at the horizon. And as it moved around, he took an average and assumed the earth was a sphere and tried to get an average idea of where it would be. Oh, he looked at the horizon, move around. I mean, I mean, so all, the measurement was the assumption that the earth's a sphere. Of course. So pretty simple. 
Not but anyway, the follow. point is that's the claim, right? That's the testable claim. Like I heard someone like flat earthers get the math wrong. This isn't our math. This is just the globe earth math. It's basic geometry, right? Like a radius value of 3959. Just math, just geometry. It has to curve at a certain rate. Right? You got to be careful well, about what you just do because there's people out there that are globe proponents that just lie incessantly. So if you just believe generally, well, these guys push the globe and they therefore they're scientific and they say flat earthers get the math wrong. How do you know they're lying though? Well, because yeah. it's clear that we're not, that that is like uh, Professor Dave goes on and on and says, Oh, well, this the curvature math is a parabola, so it doesn't. But it's it doesn't matter what it's it it works. The equation works. It, it matches yeah. to one percent. No, it, it works. It works for a period of miles. Perfect. Far up to a thousand see. miles. Yeah, yeah. Ours will ever be able to see. Yeah. So is it a thousand? To, I thought it was a hundred. No, thousand. 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 And really, really, it's like even up to three thousand. It's just like a couple of feet. It's yeah, like, it's like, I, think it, I think it's in favor of the globe. It actually yeah, it it gets it off, is. but it doesn't. It's it, it giving giving it back to the globe, right? Yep. So, so but here, somebody the, like that can never admit. He'll never be able to go on his show and say I was wrong about what I said about flat earthers. It's impossible for them to say that. Well, so then he'll I don't just think they're wrong. But he's yeah, been, but provably so. If you can do like seventh grade geometry, he's wrong. Yeah, prove so. prove that's what he says about flat earthers. <laughs> I know, but we like like that's only one of them's actual. You know, you know what we got to do. I we got to bring. Would you guys be open to doing, because obviously we're not, you know, scientists, no, right? We don't know yeah. all the ins and outs. Would you guys be open if we set up a panel with both sides to be able to do it with, with the proper knowledge? I think that would be really cool. Oh, yeah. Like, do you guys have math to back up the flat earth model and, and formulas and whatnot? Maybe yeah. Math? Yeah, well, yeah. Know, Matt, we, we, we don't make a shape claim, right? We can't freely traverse the earth. So, I mean... Meaning no, we don't like make you don't know if it's totally flat, maybe it's a little warped or something. Is that what you're saying? Well, like we just don't make a size claim. Like, I mean, flat's a description of a surface. It's flat. You can have a flat triangle, a flat square, a flat circle, right? Could be a little like, concave we don't, or whatever. Yeah, technically speaking, it could be higher at the edge as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. but where we can test, it's consistently a topographical plane. I'm saying we don't make a size claim specifically, right? Got because we can't go past the 60 South latitude, which is ridiculous. I mean, that's like hunger game stuff, right? I don't know, like draw a circle around me. And so I can't, I'm, I don't have math like that. The entire globe model is built upon the size dimension claim. Yeah. Yeah. Like for so, example, do you guys have math to explain why the sun and moon are doing this orbit circle around the flat earth? Because like if there's no gravity and stuff, like what's the force that's making the sun and moon move while the flat earth is motionless? Yeah, I like can you explain guys have it math with, for that? Yeah, magnetic levitation. Have you ever heard of quantum locking? Magnetic yeah. levitation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you, it's really cool. You just look like you can take a magnet and they'll just perpetually go in an orbit over a flat surface. It's called quantum locking um, or magnetic levitation. Same thing. So okay, what so causes saying... them to then sometimes like cross each other and change? Like like sometimes the sun and the moon go in front of each other, right? I'm yeah, pretty yeah, sure like high tide seasons and, and stuff. Like what's accounting for all that? It's all moving within the torus field. So if you look at a, a feral cell image of a magnetic field, you'll see it has a bunch of little ellipses in it, like mm -hmm. little uh, not perfectly circular orbits. And they're just moving along that. Like the sun moves in an elliptic, but they say that we move in an elliptic around it mm -hmm. because we saw the sun move. And so they're like, oh, well, actually the sun's not moving. So, you know, so like, like so you know how we were just talking about angular um, perspective or whatever, like on a flat earth model, if the sun is 3000 miles above the surface or whatever it is, you would never see the sun drop below the horizon in a giant, like the sun gets larger usually as it sets, right? You would, I would think you would see it get smaller and smaller up in the sky and then larger and larger by the day, right? How do you explain like sunsets and all that if it's rotating atop a of the flat earth? That's something I don't understand. Dave, do you have any good uh <laughs> yeah. ad? Yes. Let me uh let me let me do just my Dave the graphic slides. Guy. Dave, Dave's Dave's the graphic guy. Guy. So so first, you know, when when the when the globe trolls would be out there and say, you know, there's no way at 3,000 miles, I'm not claiming the sun is 3,000 miles above us. I think it's a lot closer, but they draw lines uh, over. Oh wow. As you get farther from the sun, you can't keep the sun at the same spot right? It gets lower. Like if I'm standing under a street light and I say, okay, that's my sun. And I could draw lines to the horizon. If I move a half a mile down the road, that it's going to be lower. And then I got to draw that line. And then I go farther away. It's lower. Then I got to draw that line. 
So let me show you how a so I would argue though that that's relative to the size, right. the height of a, a but, pole versus the sun, which is 3,000 miles in the sky. I'm, I can show you, and I, again, there's tons of videos on this that explain it better than I can do in the two minutes that I'm going to have right here. But here's my flat earth kitchen. I got my counter. And I got my path of the sun, and we're watching it from the height of the sun. We're at the height of the sun, so a celestial point of view. Dave, I got to tell you, you, you're hilarious. You're a very funny all guy. the time. All right, Here's my in. flat Earth kitchen. Okay, keep going. All right. This is my flat Earth kitchen. So this is uh, either a city skyline, mountains, cloud deck, atmospheric density, whatever. But I'm never below it, and the sun is going level. Now I have a terrestrial camera on the other end of the counter. Um, looking up and this is how a human would see it and we're watching the sun go away now look at this line if i said is this line level you'd be no it's going out about a 45 degree angle right and i would say is the sun going below this thing that's almost at eye level and you'd be like well yeah it's going below it that's why it's, it's setting it's going behind it uh you know, yeah, my, yeah i i totally so, get that so hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on so here <laughs> here it is and when you zoom in Look at it. It's almost going straight down. Right, it's I get not, it. I it's get not it. going down. And just comparing that to what we see, this is a real sunset. What's the sun going behind? It's going behind what I call the atmospheric deck of opacity. If I zoomed out, this line that it's going behind and this line, which you think is a horizon, become one line, right? It just That's not a mountain or something? No. And even if it was, it um, all condenses, mm -hmm. right? When you're looking at a mountain that's thousands of feet above your head, um, in at 20, 30, 40 miles away, it's at your eye level. Now think about the sun going behind it. It's just gonna, it's gonna just go away. It's gonna disappear behind it. And when you yeah, see- yeah, I, I totally get that. I could totally get that part. But my question is, you would see, I could see how you would say, oh, it would get to the point of the horizon and it'd be so small, it would kind of disappear below the horizon. But that's not what we see in reality. We see yes. the sun getting larger as it approaches the horizon. So, so, so again, the optical illusion of it getting bigger uh, and the giant moon on the horizon. Now here's the sun filmed on a, not over water, perfectly clear, dry day. This was filmed in Afghanistan and the sun is clearly not going down and it's not spinning. We're not falling over backwards fast than the speed of sound. It's just going away and taking its local light with it. Okay. The fool on the hill sees the sun going down. The eyes in his head see the world spinning round. Okay. It's very, very simple. So nice poem. <laughs> well, don't worry. Did you make the, that up? No, the Beatles did not, not write from, that. The Beatles did not write that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think they got it from Dave. Yeah, yeah. So, so today, I, so on my app, the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, which will bypass the Google censorship. You Google Flat Earth, Flat Earth, Jaronism, Flat Earth, Dave Weiss, Flat Earth, Sunsets, Flat Earth, Austin, what's it? Flat Earth, Bruce, you're going to get the same propaganda. That should be flag number one to make you want to look more, but everything is in here and, and so many other resources. But today's video um, is a video I took with my drone of this exact thing. I encourage you to watch it. I'm not going to play it here on the show. Um, and it shows the sun disappearing from the bottom up and it's going behind mountains that are thousands of feet above my head, but they look like the horizon. It's just going beyond something that's above your eyes, but everything comes um, it, it, it all comes together. It but all my comes point more is that should, we should definitely see the sun get substantially smaller as it yeah. sets. Let's, let's and like I watch point. the sunset yeah. in my house but, every day. The sun is much larger by the horizon. So just so you know, on both the flat or globe, okay, that's just an illusion. If you pull out a solar filter, the sun will look way smaller. Right. It's just that it's getting magnified in the Atmos and there's glare. It's true because of light. Yeah. Yeah, but it would look yeah, smaller so in the day daytime as well. Then, hundred percent. Yeah, so say say the last. What did you say? Like it would, yeah, it would look smaller at, at sunset, but it would also look smaller during the daytime or any time you pointed that at the sun. Right, right. So, so I'm so saying, like, it looks like it's getting bigger just because of glare and atmospheric magnification in either model. Like, but if it's supposed to be getting substantially so, small, like or exponentially smaller, like I just how, showed how you, how can it look optically bigger? You know, because because. Here's something. When you ever see the moon rise on the horizon, it's gigantic, right? It's huge, right? It's Sometimes, huge. Sometimes, yeah. And, yeah. And it's huge. So hold your thumb out or your finger out at arm's length and say, okay, my fingernail covers it perfectly. And wow, it's huge. And I got that measurement. Then wait three hours until it's up in the sky and you'll see that the measurement's the same. Watch that moon, take a picture of it at the horizon. And the picture's like, wow, it's not as spectacular in the picture. It looks really tiny. Try this. Mm. Turn around backwards. Look at the moon upside down through your legs, and it'll be small. 
It's the way your brain is. <laughs> you laugh. It will. It will. I'll do it. it. Will. I'll do it. It's, it's it, weird. It's yeah. the weirdest thing ever. And um, but how does that? How does that? I'm listening to everything. That's why I'm not speaking. Yeah. But I'm trying to understand how we're getting to flat Earth. Well, well, you just basically the the question the idea is that if the sun is local, it's moving away. We should see it change size a lot. We don't really do see it do that. I get that. But really, you we have a limit to view, and we can replicate this with even like a, a dome because we see in hemispheric vision, right? And you could take a light over top of it and you just pick it up within your limit and it stays the same. It basically is a focal point and never changes angular size. It does slightly change angular size though, and it changes throughout the slightly, year. Yeah. yeah, and it changes throughout the year because it moves over towards the south and it's further away. It wouldn't surprise so, me if it ends up that the sun that we see is the same distance away from you at all times. So at sunrise, at you know zenith, and at sunset. So I don't expect it to get to change in size. But, but how could it on, be if it's orbiting in a circular motion so, over? So a it's not, it's not. I don't believe it's the. It's not an actual physical item that I see. Here, here's yeah, the sign. Oh wow, I'm interesting. So what do so you I'm, mean I'm, by I'm that? Just, I'm just moving a light across this. So this is our our personal atmospheric dome of vision, if you will. So watch now. The, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it coming back from over here. I'm approaching the dome. All of a sudden, the sun will appear, just appeared on the horizon. And now it's going over me, right? And when you, if you do this in person, get a glass dome and look at it, it looks just like a sun. It looks like a sun. Are, are you guys saying that the sun is actually a kind of magnifying light hitting the firmament from a much larger light outside I, the firmament? I mean, I think I mean, again, so. It's hard to make that claim because, you know, there's not a lot of evidence, right? But it's hard to prove that, yeah. Yeah. Well, so we, we don't even, don't like we don't even need, claim. you don't need all that. Like, like the way the eyes work, we see in spherical, we see spherically, right? Like we, like we don't see in perfect straight lines. We see in a sphere, like a hemisphere specifically. So like so that means you can the horizon straight if our eyes cause that to happen. Well, that's yeah, because it's, you would have to actually get high enough above it to see it look like it's curving. Like if you take a hula hoop and you put it out over your, in front of you, it's a circle and it's level. But so if you go above that hula hoop. Is the the like, earth could be a sphere according to the shape of our eyeballs, but it's not a sphere objectively. Correct. Yes. And provably our eyes see like this because like we have crepuscular rays. I, I can't accept that. I'm, well, I'm in. I'm really in. It's just so, like that's, so that's let me let me, me let me show it's you just a fact though. Well, but uh, we can yeah. There you go. Just do this one. On the radius of a circle. Our yeah. eyesight is the radius of a circle. Right. So when when we're looking, we see the same distance in all directions, right? Because the sky comes together, and where that sky meets the ground, that's the limit of our vision, and it's at our eye at, at our eye level. I call it our horizontal eye zone. OK, so I could see whether it's three miles or 30 miles, I could see that distance, same distance, same distance, same distance all the way around. And if I put a line across it, there's your curvature. Now, the Globers will say, take that picture, put it together. You'll see curvature. Yeah, you see the same distance in all directions. If that was curvature and I followed it around by the time I was facing that way, I'd be pointing at my feet. But the horizon's still at my eye level. It's at my eye level over there, over there, over there and over there. It's always at my eye level. That's a big flat circle, but your programming tells you that it's a that it's a sphere, right? When you when programming you programming or perception. Well, your programming, and and then your perception is a factor of your programming for sure. But like, are you saying that if like something the size of an atom was standing on top of a beach ball and that thing turned around on the beach ball, it wouldn't see a horizontal plane in every direction? Oh, sure, absolutely. Like if you. You claim that the Earth is big enough sphere, then it will look locally flat. You right. close enough to the surface, absolutely. But you also still wouldn't be able to see really far in the distance. It would be physically obstructed. It doesn't matter what the horizon looks like to you. And um, technically, if you want to look at the globe dimensions, you won't see the curvature of the Earth until you get over 250 miles up at least. If you actually look at the math, so all these claims of 8,000, 18,000, 30,000 feet in a plane. I mean, that's not even what the geometry predicts. But I was only bringing that up to say that we don't see forever. We have a limit to how far we can see, and it's a hemisphere, right? And you can prove this. We, they've done the experiments. There's Al, There's something called the Alley experiments, robotic precision, uh, learning machine algorithms have had to update their algorithms so that their robotics work, right? Because uh, their vision with, with called Euclidean perspective was wrong. It's straight line perspective. It's wrong. Long story short, we don't see forever. We're not Superman. Right, and, of course. Uh, so so we have a limit in 360 degrees around us. So when the sun moves over top of us, we just pick it up in our limit, it goes over top of us, and it comes back down. So it wouldn't change angular size because you have a limit that's equidistant. 
So nah, it just doesn't. I wouldn't expect it to really change. Let me, let me show you one more, one other thing. It does, it just does. Saying all of our vision brings everything into a sphere. So this looks like a sphere. If I didn't tell you what it was, you know, you could think of maybe it's the sun, maybe it's the moon. But if you look, it's a train and it's got eight different lights. Some of them are squares, but you bring it out. It looks like a sphere in the distance. So when you look up at the lights in the sky and say that they're spheres, that's a stretch. Now, look, yeah, at but Saturn, when you zoom Saturn into that train with a like, telescope, yeah. when you zoom into that train with a telescope, you're going to see eight different lights. Have you zoomed you, into you stars? Yeah, yeah, I've zoomed yeah. into planets and I've seen them with my own eyes. I was a, I was a big nerd. Weird, like, like, we, oh. we say something, I can't do that, but just earlier, you were buying the 97% dark matter, dark energy, making it, you're like, ah, oh, that's science, we just get there slowly. But then when we say something, you're like, oh, no, no, I can't buy that. It's just weird the things that you do buy that uh, you're just buying because I guess everybody believes. Are you it. talking to Jason or me? Both. I think you guys. So I didn't say that I'd buy dark energy. Like scientists could totally be wrong about that. It could be some totally different phenomenon. I'm just saying that this is how science works in that if they don't have an answer, they'll postulate a theory to sort of fill the gap and then continue to test that theory until they can prove or disprove it. And that's all they're doing with dark energy. I, I don't feel like they're like, oh, we have a gap. Let's just make some shit up. When do you let well, it go, saying, bro? It's been 100 years. <laughs> that, is, that is what they're saying. I mean, they, they're basically saying we need gravity be, to be true. And therefore, we're just going to put placeholders there because we need it to be I true. I think they would say they know gravity is true, but that there's anomalies outside of gravity they still don't understand. Nine, yeah, well, 97% false, basically, yeah. then it's you know, not working for them. It's just weird that Feynman goes around, tells everybody, you know, if the, if the theory doesn't match the observations and we get rid of the theory, we throw it away, but they don't do that. Not on this. Not do you guys, do you guys think that the planets big are like, spheres? Are they, are they well, like, what are they? We can like, talk about that. Planets? Just, just finishing on gravity. Aaron, if I owed you a hundred dollars and I gave you $97 and said the, the other nine, I gave you three dollars, and the other ninety-seven were dark dollars. Would you be okay with that? You can't. Think of, <laughs> I don't think that's can't an appropriate them. analogy, dude. <laughs> All right, and then we said, "I'll pay you back." It's been a hundred years. We'll figure out where the other ninety-seven is. We'll get it. But I would forgive you. I would. <laughs> hey, Aaron. So if we're on a ball, the sun would be going down, 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 and it wouldn't stop. Here's a, a shot. I, was, I filmed it in the winter. Um, super clear, super dry day. The sun went down, 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 Depending down. Depending on where you are, right? Because the then earth it, is tilted. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. It stopped. And it, it sat here for 10 minutes. Now I'm filming it. Now my friends are down at the park over here. And they said the sun set from the bottom up 10 minutes earlier. <clears throat> I'm still watching the sun. And it's just going and going. And watch what happens. It's all of a sudden, it's like, uh, it's too far. And it takes its light with it. Okay, I'll repeat it over here. <laughs> that? Dude, that, that, I'm sorry, that's, that's, called... that's not, it's not, it's not science. That's not like, science. That that just looks like a uh, some edited video or something. Okay, I've never right. Seen and and, and by the way, that's exactly what the Globe Trolls that yeah. said. So I filmed it seven different times. I live streamed it. Okay, right. I filmed it a whole bunch of times on my app. There's a whole section showing these, and other people can do do this also. You, you filmed that yes. phenomenon seven times. Seven times. How Dave, I I'm, I'm coming to life. you out in Long Island. I want to see it with you. Yeah, I got to see this, bro. I'm coming yeah. to New York tomorrow. Dude, it does happen, bro. UFO I, have a, I have a really dope video from a friend of mine in Louisiana. He taped it on the water. It's like insane. The sun just disappears above the horizon. It just fades into the sky. It's insane. Yeah. It definitely yeah. happens. Could How it, could it be, serious model, question though, though. Could, it, could it be that it was a hazy day? Like, no, sure. Okay, so that means that the sure. atmosphere can make the sun disappear in the distance. The atmosphere could do a lot of things. Yeah, like, but, but, but Jason, the year. Jason, that day was was the clearest day since 2001 in September on that fateful day. Clearest day, and the sun just disappeared like that. Um, on, on the app, if you hit the web button, scroll down to the bottom row right here. I got a whole bunch of videos on it um, showing it all different times. And again, I even have the raw video linked in there. I have everything. So the whole idea of Photoshopping it is, I wish I was that good at Photoshop. I'm not. I don't even have Photoshop. Okay. Well, I'm, not, I'm not accusing you of Photoshopping, no, but I don't, what I don't, are you I saying don't is think happening on a flat earth model there? What I'm saying is the light. I'll tell you, my, my problem with this whole thing is nothing that I, per I can't speak for Aaron, but nothing that I heard so far shows me why the earth is flat. It shows me how, if the earth was flat, oh, I got this you. is how it would I, work. I got you. You want, you, you want like I mean? evidence, you want evidence the earth is flat. That's what you're saying. Like for sure, bro. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. There, we, we can see a horizontal microwave transmissions over the earth. 
microwave transmissions up 300 megahertz, 300 gigahertz. So they're really tight beams of transmissions, microwave, as opposed to radio waves, right? They're really small. Okay. So 300 megahertz is like, it'll span out about one meter, but up to 300 gigahertz, it'll only span out like one millimeter. So very, very tight beams. We can shoot microwaves like hundreds of miles over the surface of the earth horizontally, where they should be blocked by the curvature of the earth at like, say, 12 miles. They go hundreds of miles consistently. The government's been doing it since the 50s or 60s. Well, we just no, shoot you can, directly you can, you can say you're saying consistently based on altitude, correct? No, like even if you account for they do, they do put microwaves at higher altitudes, obviously, because you want to. No, I'm saying the, cons the, the consistent line is based on the same altitude the whole time. Yeah, it's just horizontal. Yeah. Okay, so my answer would be it's the same thing as as no, no, like no, a what, plane. What Jason's no. saying, no, the altitude they, they, they don't the curve. The they have through. to be line of sight. They don't it, like if there was if the microwave was a hundred feet above the ground and there's ninety feet of curvature, it would skim right over that curvature on the globe. It would have to work that way. It doesn't go no, around it, the globe why? like that. It it goes in why? a straight line. Because that's how they work. Microwaves going to straight. Yeah, microwave is so microwave is such a high frequency. It's not really affected by like what I guess refraction is what you would be claiming. Like it's horizontal line of sight transmission. That's why they normally put okay. it up at high altitudes. But sometimes they send them out anyway because the military doesn't really care about what people if they think the Earth's a ball or not. Like they want to shoot the microwave transmission. So they did it since the Cold War. And I don't trust the government declassified documents, but anyway, it still goes on today and it just shoots out horizontally and the earth should block it. So now with radio waves, they claim that they bend around because of duff rack. Why would the earth block it? Wouldn't it just go off the earth into space eventually? Sure. So like say if it travels say, in a straight line, part of it would, part of it would get blocked and part or of it, would, it should uh, hit go. the, or it should hit Antarctica because that's the highest elevation. <laughs> Part part of it would get blocked, and then part of it would go off into space. Sure, right. But it wouldn't reach like, the, other, the receiver. And exactly. you're saying that they do what? Like they they just build a tower. They send the 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 transmission straight out horizontally, and say like 15 miles, 20 miles. The Earth's curvature should block it. The Earth's curve will be higher than the tower sent out the line of sight transmission, and they go way further than that. They go up to 250 miles. Higher than the receiving tower is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, way higher. Yeah. The curvature okay. of the earth. And according to what like formula are you using to know for sure that it would be higher than the receiving? Yeah, just the just use the radius value. 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet is it gives you the that's the one I've seen videos of scientists debunking that that math is always wrong that flat earthers use that formula and they'll show the actual the equation only, i think i wrote it somewhere. the only time they have their we, government we got using we got to bring both sides with the formulas yeah. so well, the time, that would be yeah, no, we can. Austin that. knows the formulas that you know i personally just don't know so i can't speak on that so you, but you it guys would be know really the pythagorean theorem see. right you know the pythagorean theorem a squared plus Vaguely, yeah. equals c squared so mm -hmm. you, you have a right triangle right so we have we have our earth here we have our um are to the center of the earth, which is but that's geometry, Dave. No. There's trigonometry in the shape. This, of this is that's not accounting simple for. math, right? That will I that know, but the earth's shape is not as simple. Trigonometry as that is math. pretty complex. There is trigonometry in the curvature of that equation or in the equation of that cur curvature. I know that for a fact. I don't know what the trigonometry is because that's not you know my thing. Well, but when I you know get out the here, the, the, the when you get way out. It's gonna. You have to draw a line back, but here's the drop, right? So we have we have the radius of the Earth. We have a, we will go a hundred miles out. We square them, and it gives us our our um our length in feet. And you you do it in the miles, and it's um it comes out to one point two six miles, which is exactly the formula that, that Austin's telling you. So it's yeah. confirmed. There, there's no denying this. This is uh, this I'll is denying. The, uh, I'll get the AutoCAD. Yeah. Oh, uh, we can use any formula that the that any globe proponent wants to use. The microwave transmissions go far beyond the physical obstruction of the curvature right. of the Earth. Got you. And yeah, it's even yeah, worse. I, I'll put it in the chat for you. It gets even worse if we talk about radio transmissions. So <laughs> I'll explain this real fast, and I'll stop talking so much. But like Marconi sent radio transmissions back in the day, and he wanted to send them across the Atlantic Ocean. First guy to send radio transmissions. He actually took them from Nikola Tesla, but Tesla was like, "I don't care. You can have it." So anyway, the people were like, "You're not going to be able to send that that far, bro. It's going to get blocked by the curve of the Earth at 200 miles." He's like, "Well, I'm going to try anyway. 2,200 miles. First attempt successful horizontally over the Atlantic Ocean. He ended up sending it 10,000 miles. That's when we quote unquote discovered, really just invented the idea of the ionosphere." 
So they say, like you were saying earlier, you were right. Like if you send the signal out and the earth's dropping below it, it's going to keep going to space. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they say, well, it hits the ionosphere and it bounces back down. That's mm -hmm. how they got it. That's how we discover the ionosphere. But they say that nothing over 40 gig or megahertz can go above or go through the ionosphere. Okay. The world records, which are well documented all over the earth, go up to 106 megahertz uh, shooting radio waves and it goes over 2,700 miles when it should get blocked at like say 100, 200 miles, but it's way too high to bounce off the ionosphere, even though that's not proven anyway. We'll just pretend it is. It stops at 40 megahertz. You can shoot 106 megahertz radio radio waves, 2,700 miles. So the, the radio transmissions, electromagnetic propagation over top of the earth proves that the earth's not a globe. And the, and the government knows this. They have something called electromagnetic propagation over a flat earth, which is a ground weapon system document that's declassified. So, all right, I'll stop. I know that was a lot, but. <laughs> well, you know how two magnets, you can have two magnets and then a metal object in between them, and it can balance the metal object between the two poles. And you can actually send that object. Like apparently there's, there's tunnels and trains that do this already under the earth. Like, isn't that possible? That could happen with um radio waves or microwaves that the earth's use the static charge of the earth is kind of like one magnetic pole the ionosphere is another and it's balancing waves across the atmosphere so like um, i can't do the math on any of this stuff so we can yeah. just make up alternative theories all day well that's what that's all that's what the globe always the, all everything that comes down to is that the globe earth has to make claims that can't be tested like that's like that's why we don't believe it because like but the Globers say the opposite, man. They say all of our theories we can prove with math. Flat earthers can't prove anything with math. So it's like, how do we know which side but to believe? I can show you an equation how Superman flies, bro. Like math doesn't prove things. Science explains things, math describes things. I can give you math that works perfectly to explain the earth being in the center of the universe. So does that mean the earth's in the center of the universe? Like dynamically, I, mean, kinematically. I don't know if you can. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's called the neo tyconic system using Newtonian mechanics. Or anyway, I'm saying that you agree that like math doesn't necessarily mean something's true, right? Like I, I can describe something. I, I think it does. A, that's a, that's an opinion I definitely hold. That the whole universe is mathematics, numbers. Like, everything like can be there's, calculated. There's like a, everything can be measured. There's like a geometric view. But just also, because we have yeah, that, that work works. doesn't prove right. Like if there was an island out in the ocean and we could look through our our binoculars and we can kind of see it, but then I give you all the mathematics for all the rides that are there and all the roller coasters and the angles. Well, just because that math is right doesn't mean that's what's actually on the, I could be totally lying about what's on the island, right? Just because the math works, you can't just say, well, the math works, therefore what he says is on the island is true. How would you know the math works though if you're lying about what's on the island? Because I just made it up. I can make roller coasters that have different angles and have different heights. And well, yeah, like I'd have to go to that island and test your mathematics on the actual roller coasters. And then so I can are verify. we going to go to space? There are we going to go to space and verify that you, there you, you just go. nailed it? Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> well, wait, 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 real quick. If I have a mathematical, if I have math that makes the geocentric model work, like just say hypothetically, I can fully map out. Geocentric model? Ge yeah, geocentric Earth. Like let's say I can fully map out geocentric universe. And all the math works. And then I can do the same thing for a heliocentric universe. Okay. Both gotcha. of the math works. They can't both be true. I think That's astronomers would say the math doesn't work for a geocentric yeah. universe. Uh, you gotta look at it. It would be objective. No, you know, it's like, like it's like having the conversation. I'm not gonna, you guys are all gonna know what I'm saying here, but like the medical industry over the past three years, you know, where, where right. they show how there's science that shows that something's good and science that shows something's bad. And that's where, that's like the gray area of like, well, what the hell do we do now? Cause, right. cause you know what, how do you know if both sides can show something through mathematics? And then I guess the only answer to that is really based on not just mathematics. We can use mathematics because like Robert Edward Grant, for example, he's a genius mathematician in terms of what he does. But combined with that, there's also like our observations. So my observations, when I look at everything, literally in the macro and the micro, the reason why, forget about what I, just so you guys know, in terms of like a background of personally how I grew up, I was always taught question everything. But like, like in 2004, question everything. And, and that's kind of how I live my life. So I know that sometimes, you know, people look and they're like, well, you were just told that, but there were legitimate questions also and what observations. Have you, so have you found the, things then that are not correct? I mean, have you, by questioning everything and being skeptical, have you found things that you've been lied to about? Have you found? Probably 95% of everything okay. that I've been told wasn't just, true. Okay, yeah. so just now take that other 5% on the chin, bro. Yeah, I'll take yeah. that and just. <laughs> 
Think oh, no, 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 I'm with you. But just because 95% isn't true, but no, no, but not that. everything's a lot. Think about the things sure. that are the farthest away from you, the things that you'll never be able to verify. That To think that that is the truth is an insane belief to think that no, but, but what about, about things that are within you? What about things that are within, sure, but there's no above, planet so below, within you? There's within, no, so without, there's no, I mean, the, the distance of the planets being, or the stars being, Oh, forget about the planet. Away. Let's go, let's go inside. Oh, I like that. Cells. I like where you're talking. Now you're talking my, my language. You so know, yeah, let, let, let's, Sweet. Go let's go there. Our own cells. We, yeah. we see atoms. We see an electron, the proton, the nucleus in the center. Where do we see those? It's, it's working. I don't think they believe in quantum mechanics, dude. No, probably not true. Anyway, yeah, I don't think there's no things. I believe right, that quantum so, mechanics so, is legit, but the interpretation's wrong. Let's just clarify that. I, well, I I'm that. with you there. I don't think they've maybe interpreted it right, but the fact that there are electrons, neutrons, protons, I think that's without doubt. The phenomena is 100% real. Uh, what they say it is, is not. The, like all these little physical particles, that they, that's all. The, the electron is 100 million times smaller than the atom. It's a particle of matter, but it has no size or shape. That doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't believe in their interpretations, but it's one of the most experimentally valid and precise For sure. fields ever. Yeah. That's because it yeah, exists we, we as a wave, things. right? Not a particle. Sure. And waves are, waves are motion, not types are not things. So something right. has to be moving and that's where we get into ether. And so I don't know what you guys think about ether, but it exists. It I'm exists. Fan ether. Of ether. Oh yeah. Well then you're not a big fan of the globe, bro. If, if I'm a ether big fan exists, of the globe. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Did you know that's why they won't say ether though? Because if there's an ether, well, to me, then we have a big space. problem. Well, yeah. I mean, ether was supposed to be substantive, right? And it's like, it has some substance and it sustains the energy. And if that exists, like there's measurable energy in space. Correct. Right. right. So that's a problem for that. That's a, that's why they can't merge uh, cosmology and quantum because if you had an ether, right. You Different can't explain law system. Medical, yeah. Yeah. And that doesn't make right. There, there's obviously a unified theory somewhere. That's how it's going to work. Right. Yeah. I think that there is, I think we might be a while off from that. The, to me, like what Jason's saying is that, the fractal universe in that the microcosm is the macrocosm. We have quantum particles that are similar to a planet orbiting a sun, a sun, a star orbiting a galaxy. Like to me, it speaks of the magnificent intelligence of the creator that it goes infinitely in all directions forever, that there's infinite worlds, infinite beings in the universe. And when you juxtapose that awe inspiring picture of creation against what flat earthers say, which is like, one planet, no, nothing else exists. No other no. beings were the one special. No, planet. they don't say it's that. It's just like a boring, unimaginative universe to me. We don't say that. And and if you want, all to my friends who are flat earthers say that. Well, if you want to speculate what's beyond the shoreline of Antarctica, we're happy to do that. And I, I would actually like to do that. But you, we, we touched. We were going to go to seasons. You guys, you said how do seasons work? I think Dude, that we have so many questions still. This topic okay. is crazy. But yeah, I think it is, it is. by the way, guys, I, I got 25 minutes left just right. to get to give you that timing. So this is going to take six minutes, maybe less. All right, Aaron, I want you. You really got to focus on this one. Seasons, you know, we're told we're, we're told that because when we're tilted away from the sun, we have our winter and when we're tilted towards the sun, we get more direct lights. Is that your understanding? Right, of half seasons? the year. Yeah, half the yep. year. Did you know that during our north? You in the, where are you located? You're in Austin, a, Texas. Okay. So during our winter, we're three and a half million miles closer to the sun in the Northern hemisphere. Are you aware of that? Um, I, I guess. Sure. In the globe model, we're closer to the sun in the winter farther, which is the, the opposite. And well, winter is subjective though, right? Northern hemisphere, Southern hemisphere, like because our winter is their the, summer. So I, I'm, that's what I'm saying. During our Northern winter, the globe is three and a half million miles closer to the sun. Just a weird right. thing. We won't, we're not going to tilt it away from the sun. We're tilted, oh, tilted away from the sun. And the farther north you are, the more tilted away you are because it's, it's tilted mm -hmm. farther and farther away. So if that was true, if it was the tilt of the sun, how come it's not freezing cold in June at sunrise? Because at sunrise, the sun is on the horizon. It's not even that little tilt. It's literally the farthest it could possibly be tilted. So sunrise in summer, I'm in Connecticut. Um, I could feel the heat on my face immediately. We were three and a half million miles farther from the sun. The sun, it couldn't be any lower in the sky, but I could feel the heat like it's closer to me. And in December at noon, when the sun is at its highest point of the day, I could look at the sun. I could barely feel the heat on my face. And it's three and a half million miles closer and a much more direct angle because you can tilt the ball any way. 
doesn't just tilt okay, so let's just so slow down real quick so i can yeah. hang with you so yeah northern hemisphere yep. during our summer we're three and a half million miles farther from the sun yes mm -hmm. In the helio so that would be model. that would be winter for the southern hemisphere because they're tilted it has to why. do with the tilt it has to do with the tilt right okay. so so i want to i'm gonna i'm gonna make my my but does it doesn't that make sense if the earth if the sun is so-called here and the earth is tilted this way it's a much more direct hit that's but you have to think about sun like to me the, se the season model of the globe earth thing makes 100% sense. And that model it, that I it, saw over there, the Tropic of it, Cancer in the center it, is it, much smaller than the Tropic of Cap Capricorn on the outside, it, which means that one would have to take much longer for the it, sun to go around. Sun the goes fast. No, the end of a clock. No. Look at the hand of that clock. Look at the hand of the clock. The end of the clock and the, and the I mean, the hand, end of the hand and the inside of the hand, they're going around at the same speed. Okay. Not, so it's not going, so getting Jason, around faster. Same Jason. Thing. You're saying that seasons only make sense because of the tilt. You haven't processed the information of how come it's warm at sunrise in June and freezing at noon in December when it's the opposite. The angle is way better at noon in December and it's closer and it's freezing. And in June, it's farther and it couldn't be any farther tilted. It's literally skimming across the earth, right? And it should be absolutely freezing, but it's not. Here's how seasons work. If you see... The sun is over the Tropic of Cancer right now. Um, in, in a couple, in a, two weeks, it'll be directly over it. And six months later, so we're having our inner northern summer. The sun is close to us. The sun never gets too far from Alaska, right? That's why it doesn't set in Alaska. You get your 24 hours of sun, right? So we're having our summer. And in Miami, you're down uh, near Miami, right? It's hot in June because the sun literally is almost directly over you. It's a little south but it's higher in the sky than I have it here because it's farther away from me. Then six months later, one, two, three, four, five, six, the sun moves out to the Tropic of Capricorn and it's farther away from New York. It's farther Are away. Are you telling me that the sun moves faster to go no. around that line? Hold on, we'll, 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 I'll, I'll explain the, the speed thing to you. Because that's uh, a much bigger circumference. I, than I'm going to explain the speed thing to you. We're just talking about the position of the sun. Then we'll explain the speed. Right, because the sun is farther away, it's going to go right over Australia. It's their summer, it's our winter. The sun is farther away. If you and I, I don't Jason, understand the dark spot on that map because it's, it's the way the light, the light, the sun is reflecting off of the dome and wraps around a little bit. So and the you, sun is above the dome. The sun that we see, the, the sun that we see, I think, is within the dome. It's like that focus so point. How would you eating. get that shape of shadow? Shouldn't what there just mean? be what, less light? Uh, what so do you I, mean, I, I think, I, though, there, there hold, needs to hold be a on, model. Hold on. I showed you before. I showed you before, but you didn't look. I showed you before how does the shape of the light works. We're not talking about the shape of the light, and we're not talking about the speed of the sun. We're talking about how seasons work. Then we'll, we can address those things if you want. You only got 25 minutes, probably 20 now. Okay. If Jason, if you came up here in February and we uh, sat outside uh, in the middle of the winter, it's freezing. We're in Connecticut. It's horrible here. And um, everything's frozen. And you and I are 25 feet apart because we don't want to, you know, infect each other. And we're having our beers, but our beers are freezing. Then Aaron comes by and he's got a uh, 15 foot pole with a giant heat lamp and he holds it directly over you 15 feet in the air. You're going to go, ah, and you're going to take off your shirt. You're, you're, then you're going to, your beer is going to melt. And I'm going to say, Jason, where's that sun? And you're going to go, oh, it's right there above me. And I'm going to look at it and go, well, it's not above me. It's kind of farther away and lower. But in you my still sky. see it. I can still, still see, see it. it. I can still see it. It's lower in my sky, like in no, the. But at nighttime, at hold nighttime, on, hold on. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about that. We that's a, we we already went over that. Those and, are important points. I know, but, that, but like, we already went over it. I, I can, what you're saying. No, it's not. Absolutely not, because I we we partially went over it, but I'll go over it again. So I can see it. It's lower in the sky, and I I am cold, and you're warm. Now, Jay, Aaron, you walk over to me, keeping it at the same height. I watch it get higher in my sky and warmer, and you watch it get lower in your sky and colder. I'm not, I'm not quite following. Are you? That's, are we all in the same location? Well, uh, uh, we're just sitting on a flat field. Okay, we're sitting like within field, ten feet of each other. Twenty like feet, what? twenty feet apart, and you're holding okay. a light, a, a heat lamp directly over okay. Jason, 10, 10 feet over his head. 
Okay. And he could feel the heat from it. I'm 20 right. feet away. And that light is kind of, it's not that, that it's, it's like down there. It's not up there. It's down there. And I'm cold. Right. I can barely feel the heat. That's my winter sun. And then as you walk over to me, that's the sun migrating closer to me. It's getting higher and higher. I'm getting warmer and warmer. Jason's getting colder and colder and his sun's getting lower and lower. Go do the experiment yourself and you'll see it. And the reason you can't see it You're is- You're trying to replicate the mass of something huge it, no, on an you, experiment in your backyard. You're, uh, the something if, huge, how big is the sun? How, what what is the mass of the one sun? One second. I don't know. I have no, do you know the mass of the sun? No, and I don't think that- oh, I know that physical. it's freaking massive. How do you know that? It's just right there in our sky. It's not that big. What do you mean? You go up in our sky in an airplane, it doesn't get closer to you. Because as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, it's actually colder up there when you're 30,000. There's less out. air. There's no air. No. Because yeah. there's a gradient back to the beginning of what we were saying. The only less way air. you can have a gradient is have a container, brother. That's the only way you can, you can have a gradient in a container. So, but I want to answer no, your you, questions real fast okay. about the speed. Okay. There's, so yeah. you get 15 degrees per hour in the sky. I personally, I don't know what they think, but I think that you could easily need the sun to go quicker in the South a greater circumference but if you look at the fact that there's an ether vortex which has been well known by tesla and pretty much everyone forever until einstein came around um there's a vortex so like a tornado it's tighter and smaller at the bottom so it's faster so like in the south it could be slightly slower or lower altitude hence why it changes altitude or changes uh, angular size that in distance goes a little faster goes a little slower so you would have the same angular velocity but you would have different tangential velocity, just like on the globe earth, right? Like you're every, the whole globe spinning together, right? Um, 15 degrees per hour once every 24 hours. But like, as you get to the North and South, it gets smaller. So it's technically spinning slower. What so it's gets all smaller? Got the, uh, the, like the size of the earth, right? Like it's widest at the equator. Oh, right? gotcha. So, so it goes slow, fastest at the equator and slowest at the north and south, but it's all turning together, right? The 15 right. degrees per hour. So that's angular velocity. And then the tangential velocity is different. Uh, anyway, same thing with the sun. It's all the same. I, I, like, I don't even know what that means. I don't know what angular and sorry, tangential okay, velocity sorry. is. Yeah. I yes. mean, like, remember, I, I, we, we're not scientists here. So no, no, you're need, good. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. on the heat of the summer thing you were talking about, Dave, of like why in June, if we're farther away, is it warmer? What, from what I understand, it's the direction of the angle the sunlight's hitting the earth. If I have a sphere, if the light's hitting straight on, it's going to be really hot here. Right. But on the bottom side of the sphere, that same amount of sunlight is displaced over a greater surface area, okay. which so, makes the so, heat lower. So, so here's, here's America right here, okay? And here's noon for America, right? It's, it, and that's like, where, where it looks like we're right on the equator. Where's sun, where's, uh, where is... Um, Sunrise. Sunrise would be instead of the sun being there, it would be over here. Could you be any more tilted away from the sun? Because that's a tilt away from the sun, right? I'm tilting away, right? So at sunset, you couldn't have any less of an angle because it's tilted away. I don't axial tilt or rotational tilt. It's the same right. thing. If the Which sun is on the cooler at sunset. It, okay, so. I'm down with now you're with me. How come in <laughs> June, how come in June at sunrise, it's warm. And at noon in December, because the earth freezing. is tilted towards the sun, then causing the sunlight to be more direct than in the oh. winter when it's displaced over the bottom. That you, you're, you're, you're discounting the spin of the earth as a tilt. The spin of the earth is a, it's the same thing. Okay. It's clear. It spins, but on a tilt at an angle. What, 21 By the degrees way, just, just like so that? we're on the same page, the earth, if the sun's here, the earth t it spins this way, not this way. I think we know that, right? So it's spinning this way on a tilt. And based on where it is around the sun, it's either on that tilt closer to here yeah, yeah. or closer half to the here. year it's closer, it's half the south. year it's farther. Right? So there's your northern and southern hemisphere according to that globe model, right? I'm, I'm, I'm honoring both sides over here. So there's a Northern and Southern hemisphere on both sides. And to me, it makes a lot more sense to be able to explain that, to be able to explain the counter clockwise and clockwise thing of the, all the constellations. It, it just like, what's the problem with that? Oh, all of it can be explained exactly the same with the earth in the center. Um, 
even Einstein said this, everything occurs on the earth as if the earth is at rest. Everything could be explained with the earth in the center. But no, but you're, leaving, you're leaving out the second part of that quote. Different quote. Where he says there is, there is, and I, I know you know this because it was in one of those movies Different where quote. he said, you know, why don't you say it? Because you probably know it better. Yeah, yeah. like he, and one, of, well, one of them, he says that I've come to the conclusion that no optical experiment can detect the motion of the earth, though the earth moves around the sun. And a lot of flat earthers left that off and they're like, oh, they're misrepresenting it. Well, our point was that he said that, but no, there's multiple quotes. There's another one. He says, no terrestrial experiment can detect the motion of the earth. And until relativity was put forward, it was difficult to become reconciled with that. He has another quote that says, everything occurs on the earth as if the earth is in a state of rest. So what he said, that's that's the conservation of motion, right? If if we're sitting on a train or something going 50 miles an hour, we have no windows, no way of knowing how fast we're going visually. Like mm-hmm. we wouldn't know how fast we were going. It would feel like we were And if there's a train moving next to you at 50 miles an hour, it's going to look like you're stationary. That's right. it, right? Relativity. Like if this train's moving or you're moving, you, yeah. you wouldn't be able to know they're equally valid. That's why he says the, the struggle so violent in the day of Copernicus and Ptolemy, meaning geocentrism versus heliocentrism, was useless. And both of them are equally valid. Whether you say the earth moves around the sun, the sun moves around the earth, they're both equally valid. That's what Einstein, that's what relativity says as a theory. So there's nothing about the motion of the stars and the planets and the, anything like that that's exclusive to us flying through space, like according to the mainstream model. They're kinematically. Equivalent. I mean, there, there, there is, though, because 6,000 years ago the, or even less than that, 4,000 years ago, whatever it was, the documentation of the stars that they had above them were a little bit different. Like Polaris wasn't always Polaris. There was a different star there. I forgot the name, but so there say. are changes over there. That's what they say. I mean, and even if know, that was true, that still doesn't matter. That would just mean the stars are moving, right? Do, like, do flat have earthers the, uh, have a model to like predict the, the movement of constellations mathematically? Like you can well, say, was, oh, this that star. Was around before, that was before the earth was a globe, right? They knew about eclipses. They could predict eclipses with the Soros cycle. That was back in Babylonian days when they thought it was flat. So, but now, even before, but, even but before. can you do that is what I'm saying. Yeah, you, absolutely. Yeah. You you surely your cycle. model's different than ain't the ancient world. Yeah, but I think that what, really. what I think is important because you guys have been kind about it, but I, I think also you have to remember that every bit of exploration and 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 investigation of Antarctica, of every coastline, of map making, of the oceans, everything has been done by governments, has been done by uh, monarchies. They've been backed by millions of dollars. So to expect flat earthers, who's you know a hundred people on in, on YouTube uh, trying to point this stuff out, to expect us to have anywhere near the equal amount of what do we have a model what's your mathematics which just understand that that's a little bit of a of a of a you know of a a high, there needs there. to be some sort of mathematics to make those claims at a base a fundamental base which claim i mean it depends on which claim right again everything that i heard so far is if the earth was flat this is how it would work so jason right. that's what the globe you, says though and every model i hear is different like there's no unified model it seems it's like my friends think one thing you guys think a different thing a lot of it's speculation, whereas yeah, astronomers we're not would say we can prove everything in heliocentrism with mathematics. Well, you got. Uh, well, well, let, let's go. Let's go to the ancients for a second, and I want to. I want to show a video. I'm going to play it at faster speed, okay. just because of the time that we have here. But the Egyptians, or I mean, I think we can all agree, whatever you think they were, were I mean, highly advanced. And this is something that I saw, I think it was like a year ago. I want you guys to check this out. Everybody watching this, it's an amazing video. It's only going to take about two minutes and 30 seconds because I'm speeding it up. Let me just move my microphone so you guys can hear this. How I think the pyramids were built. To be honest, I have no answer to that question. And anybody who tells you that he or she knows how the pyramids were built are not telling the truth because we don't know. We don't know. The Great Pyramid contains a number of mysteries. The Great Pyramid, first of all, is very big. The Great Pyramid weighs 6 million tons. We can calculate that from its mass. It weighs, it weighs 6 million tons. Its footprint is 13 acres. It's more than 750 feet along each side. It's 481 feet tall. More than 2.5 million individual blocks of stone were used in its construction. But it's not just big. It's really, really precise. The Great, the great Pyramid is locked in to the cardinal dimensions of our planet. The Great Pyramid is targeted on true north within 3 sixtieths of a single degree. Now, no modern builder would create a large building and add onto his or her shoulders the additional burden of aligning it to true north within a fraction of a single degree. They just wouldn't get it. They wouldn't understand why it was important to do that. But something drove the builders of the Great Pyramid to go to 
a very great additional trouble, not only to create this massive imposing monument, but also to lock it on to true north, and then other things, to incorporate into its dimensions the dimensions of our planet. I don't want to get too numerical or, or possibly even boring here, but if you take the height of the Great Pyramid and multiply it by 43,200, you get the polar radius of the Earth. And if you measure the base perimeter of the Great Pyramid accurately and multiply that measurement by 43,200, you get the equatorial circumference of the Earth. In other words, for thousands of years, through times, through dark ages, when human beings didn't even know they lived on a planet, never mind its dimensions, that monument has been has encoded and speaks out the dimensions of our planet on a scale of 1 to 43,200. And the scale is not random. The number 43,200 is derived from a key motion of the Earth, which is called the precession of the Earth's axis. The Earth wobbles on its axis very slowly at the rate of one degree every 72 years. And 43,200 is a multiple of 72. In fact, I think it's 600 times 72, but I need to double check that. But it's a multiple of 72. Check it out. So they've given us the dimensions of our planet on a scale defined by the planet itself. And that's an incredibly clever thing to do. How on earth did they do it? Where, where did that knowledge come from? This is why I'm forced to consider the possibility of a lost civilization in the human story. And then he just keeps going. It's it's about other things, but it's in it. Yep. You, yeah, it's pretty it. incredible. Okay, yeah. So so what are what are your thoughts on something like that? Because like I, I regard, awesome. you know, that civilization as a highly advanced civilization. Do Absolutely. you think they were wrong? Do you think the interpretation was wrong? No, they were right. They were right. They they said the earth was flat, but well, the reason that you get those numbers and it really kind of debunks the earlier point that they found true north. Well, how they do that, how they build it with true north today, thousands of years later, it's still on true north. That kind of debunks that Polaris is moving. How else would they find true north? But the reason that those, um, the, the because, that, because that wobble takes thousands and thousands and thousands well, but that, of years. The shafts are so, still, the shafts are so. still pointed at Polaris, which means we have to believe that they built it when it was pointing at Thuban. And then there was 4,000 years where it was pointed at nothing. And we just happened to be. Well, right. that's on the implication that we know when they actually built it. And, Wait, and, 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 and so, so, so Jason, we do know when they built the Georgia Guidestones and this whole points towards Polaris. Now they said that the wobble of the, you know, besides that we're traveling four and a half billion miles a year, never to return to where we were before, somehow Polaris stays lined up. And the story is it's so far away that the even other stars are moving too. That, but the, everything's moving in unison with the earth. By the way, the ancient Egyptians did not think the earth was, was flat. Yes, they so, did. so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me make my point. Not, not to what <laughs> my, I've my ever point looked. is. My point is, so so they claim that it's so far away that it doesn't move. Okay, which is ridiculous, but we'll we'll give it to him. But it, it will. The, he said alone that the procession is one degree every seventy two years, right? So a half a degree would knock it way out of this hole. The, we know when the Georgia Guidestones were built, nineteen eighty one. They just blew them up for some reason, and uh, you know, random terrorists. Um, and the hole was still there. Now you looked at a hole, you can see Polaris. Do a time lapse. There it is. Um, have we ever done it? Yeah, lots of us have done it. Austin was there. He did it. I did that. But yeah. I want to I want to I want to answer this question. Though. This is a good question. They're asking, like, how would they have gotten the, the dimensions of the globe that long ago? Obviously, they knew that the Earth was a globe and they got the dimensions right. We don't we need to answer the question. This is how we got the dimensions of the globe. We looked at the sky. We looked at the celestial sphere. We mm -hmm. took me angle measurements to Polaris from different distances. And then we engineered a sphere model. We said, oh, the sky is changing as we move because the earth is curving. They just modeled out the sky. And so you get the same dimensions. The same ratio happens over a plane if the sky is just being optically declined. They just took the measurements. And then later people said, oh, that happens because we can see forever. And actually the earth is curving. That's why the dimensions match. The globe model was made based on how we see the sky. So it, that, that's why the dimensions match. And I don't know if so you've ever really looked into it. Oh. You're going yeah. back to perception, like the eyeball thing. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's called an azimuthal grid. You get your zenith directly over you. You have your azimuth for your direction. So you have the line up, the line out, and then you take measurements going up, right? And that creates a dome all around you. And then what people say is, well, that dome changes because the earth is curving. Or just the way that you see is always the same. And so based on where you are, it changes, which is logical. So that's where they got those measurements. That's all I'm saying. Because they did depict cosmology as a flat plane. They actually had the, you know, the, the woman stretched out over top of the earth containing it with the stars inside of her. So hypothetically speaking, let's say you could go to space, right? Let's, let's, let's just imagine that we were there looking at whatever the planet was yeah. but i guess you guys say it's a plane right mm -hmm. and it continues 
Not in space, but yes. Not in space. So, so what is like, what is that? Two questions. Number one, what is the black thing above that flat line from the Red Bull guy jumping? What, what is that, all that black area? Yeah. I say call it space. It's just not space as they tell us is what you're saying. Like space is real. It's just outer space is space. Correct. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying that there's still space between whatever this plane is and, and there may be another plane. Is that correct? Well, no. I mean, there's just stuff in the sky above us. Correct. Right. I mean, we can call that space. Like, Can I ask like one or two burning questions before we drop off? Um, yeah, but I would just tell you, do, do, do some research on the actual dimensions of the pyramids. That they, they, It's all fudged. It's not, none of it is that. Sure. Yeah, we'll look into it. They, they, so have you guys, have you guys looked at the moon through a telescope? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And would you say it's a sphere pretty clearly? It looks like it. it definitely looks like a sphere. Okay, so like I'm, un, I'm not understanding like by what laws of physics do flat earthers say that the earth is remaining as a flat disk mm -hmm. while the moon and other planets we can observe are definitely spheres? There's, there has to be a law, right, that's allowing that to happen. Sure. Oh. So... But, There's something called a block domain wall or an inertial plane, a block domain wall in the middle of every magnetic field. There's a plane right through the middle of it. So that's it. We, we live on the plane. There's a toroid and the earth being in the center and everything moving around it. It doesn't really make logical sense to think we would be the same as everything in the sky that's paying homage to the earth by moving around it. The earth's the only thing in the center. It's different. It's the plane that cuts through the middle of a magnetic field. You can look up block domain wall. In a magnetic field, the all magnetic fields have a plane to the middle. We live in there. We live in the torus field of energy. Everything moves around the Earth in the center. Not, so we're, we're special. Not basically. understanding. Like, like, why are they yeah, spheres perfect. and we're flat? Like, shouldn't they obey the same laws that Earth is obeying? No, because even, we're even in the if center, Earth is in the center. Moves around. Wait, but let's why, say, why would why how do you know how do you know it's a sphere? How do you know it's a sphere? The shape of the lights you're feeling don't dictate the shape of your floor. This looks like a sphere because they're moving. And that looks like a sphere, those, yeah. but it's not a the sphere. Rings Look, Saturn, it's flat. Dave, the rings okay. of Saturn, the but, rings but, of Saturn. But here, here's you the thing. are the rings of Saturn. Do you believe that they're little rocks that are orbiting? I don't know. I've never been there, but I have seen rings. Absolutely, they're literally yeah. going. There around, are. Right? There you can't are. really see them move, but you right. see. Yeah, you see it. But when you look at it, it's my, literally a light. Telescope. It's a light. It's a light in the sky. We don't know what oh, it is, and neither do you. And and if you do the actual math on no, the brightness that we see these stars, the, the brightness that we see the moon, the fact that the moon and the stars are in the same focal length, right? When you look at this stuff, and when you look at the angular size and the distances they tell you these things are, are it, it's scientifically impossible. Jason, you know, you know how close the closest star is? The closest star, including <laughs> our sun. How close is the closest our, star? Exclu yeah. Excluding our sun, I believe it's 4 billion light years away or something. No, like that. It's, it's 25 trillion miles away, four and a half light years. Okay, no problem. Yeah, four, uh, I'm sorry, four light years away. That's what yeah. I meant Four light years, 25 trillion yeah. miles. If you and I were traveling at 100,000 miles an hour and we mm -hmm. went... We Which is very slow. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even fathom that speed. It would take us 28 thousand years to get to the closest star okay well it doesn't at, well, sound ridiculous to me though well, wow, so, really? you, know, you know about the angular no, square no. The, the, the because it, 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 it sounds ridiculous within the matrix that we know that we think right. is limited by the well, speed well, of light. that's where we live hey so, there you go hey he knows right? the speed of light's probably wrong i'm with you on that brother okay i i think and and one of the things that i was actually taught and looked deeper into from Robert Edward Grant, who I have a lot of respect for, he changed the speed of light to our speed of perception. It's not about the speed of yeah, light. That that's that's what I say. That's which is I awesome. Say. Which is awesome. I totally right. go with that. I think that's great. Oh, nice. So our matrix is really the limitations yeah. of our perception as we know it. But the limitations of our perception doesn't mean that that's where reality ends. There must be something beyond that because if energy cannot be created or destroyed, it's limitless. And if it's limitless, then of course, 100,000 miles per hour isn't that fast in the grand scheme of thing, okay. things of infinity. But we shouldn't so, really be paying almost, any attention. It to almost it. sounds like you're saying God can't be big enough to make a universe like this. It can't be grand enough. It has it's to be It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's, I mean, it's beautiful, it's the man. Most, it's the most perfect shape in the world. Yeah, well, that's why we live inside of one. <laughs> You rather live of inside sphere? of a sphere? Inside, well, a torus field is effectively a sphere, yes. Right. And we live in the middle of it, and that's why the atom is actually a torus field. Everything's electromagnetic, everything's a torus field, your body, everything. I'm open to you. that. 
But like even the water plane drop in, the middle in of space it, you know? always forms into a sphere, like the water curves into like, a sphere. E even this, look Why how beautiful this is. That's a drop look of water. Now do that with yeah. a gallon we're, of water. Or shake it and see what happens to them. They'll end up in the puddle flat on the ground. But yeah. again, there's a scale between the mass of, of a planet. Right, so where's the mass big. Earth? You just told us the tiniest little drip and you're trying to compare it to the Earth. I mean, that's electrostatics. Yeah. I'm sure it is. That's what I was saying with electrostatics and electro. So whatever the law is, it makes it the millimeters into a sphere and all much bigger objects. No. Guys, 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 guys. The bigger you get, the more impossible that is. Not the what? more possible it is. Yeah. Why? What do I, mean? I, I, I don't. Get why that I, I'm not sense. with that. What, go, go into go into the uh, vomit comment and try and get a, a a ball of water bigger than a, a basketball to stay co co together. It's impossible. It won't happen. Why you don't, don't we know big giant? Comment. That's because you're doing, that's because you're doing it. That's because you're doing it in this planet where there's that whatever. No, but there there is no. But they don't have. If they're on the the vomit comet, there is. It's the same as being in free fall. What's, yeah. what's a vomit comet? I'm sorry. You, you go up in the air and then you free fall. fall. It's, it's like the parabola airplane. Oh, okay, but again, gotcha. you, we're trying to replicate something within an atmosphere that you Here. can't isolate yourself out of. Jason, Jason, I want you to do the The macro is the micro. So I want to agree with you, bro. You're a flat earther in the making if you actually think that, by the way. <laughs> I, I I don't think that. I know that. You guys know it, that too. The flat earth yeah. universe above, isn't fractal, though. It is. Above, it's so all below. it's all toroid. It's everything's a torus. Every no, but it but it isn't fractal, is what I'm saying. But the torsion field is a sphere. You don't have That's the right. same laws happening at different levels. We do. Everything fact, is electromagnetic torus. But, but that's though. not what a fractal is, though. That would be like the force that causes things. But a fractal is the same archetypal laws replicating at different levels. Yes. Like different songs with the same drum beat. Like the flat earth yeah. universe is just limited. But you to think the, that one, the globe, the everything is a torus planet. field, bro. Everything's a torus field. The atom right, is I a agree. torus field. Everything's a torus field. Torus fields are spheres, fractal. which is why planets form in spheres, right? And not well, flat. Well, no, they, they, that's what they specifically don't claim. They claim that gravity coalesces it into a sphere right. over billions of years because gravity, because electromagnetism doesn't work in a vacuum. So we're the only one that get the torus field. You, you guys don't get to get the torus <laughs> What do you mean field. electromagnetism doesn't work in a torus field? And it by the no, way, the, the globe earth, model a shows a torsion sorry. field around Earth all the time. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't actually. It shows a symmetrical one, which is not what the data shows in the globe. But I'm saying it can't make the planets move around each other because it couldn't be like that in a vacuum. The electromagnetism couldn't work in a vacuum with no material to sustain it over that great of a distance in a vacuum. That's why they don't use electromagnetism. J Jason, when when you're talking about torus field on a globe, a when you're talking about torus field on the globe, there has to be symmetry between the north and the south. But there is no symmetry. Austin, what school in Globers is the one where you go over that? You know the you know it. So, uh, maybe the 12th episode 12. Yeah. Maybe. So he's got a series called schooling Globers where he shows how it, the, the globe doesn't work because there would have to be symmetry in the North and then the South with daylight, you know, and we were talking about the speed of the sun, uh, you know, out over Capricorn, uh, during equal times of the year, uh, you know, six months apart at equal latitudes in the North, when the sun sets, we have another two hours of light before the sun really, before it gets dark, at equal latitudes south at, in, when it's over Capricorn six months later, um, so it's dark in five minutes in many places. Five minutes, sunsets, pitch black in five minutes. That's because the sun is running away much faster. It could be the same on the globe, yeah. There's, I'm just saying, we, like, I, it would be equal, that, in the, it would be the no, same. No, 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 it has to be the same on the globe. It has to be the same. I mean, the, like, the most I've heard from like anyone is that that's not true. They just say, nah, -uh. like that. Cause it has to be the same in the North and South. It's a sphere, you know? What do you mean? What's the same North and South? I'm not quite understanding. Like it, like if, if the earth is a sphere, then six months apart in the North and the South, you're going to get the same, like summer here, summer there, six months right. apart. Right. So that means that the, when the sun leaves the, the earth is the same size. It's moving the same speed. Mm -hmm. Right. So that means that when the sun goes behind the curve of the earth, then you should have the same amount of uh, twilight. You should see the leftover but, light. But you have to factor light. in the tilt and sure. the wobble of the Earth tilt. Yeah, all of that. The, the wobble takes Almost like either a thousand years or seven yeah, years. And, yeah, and they have like, mathematics that explain all of it. No, no, no and it's like, never you're, you're not, the you're twilight. Not, not no, no, but there's something, there, there's something you guys are leaving out. The Earth is not claimed to go around the sun in a perfect circle. It's an ellipse. It's, it's sure. elliptic. Right. It, yeah. it's, it's ellipt That's how it goes. It's more of an oval. So yeah, it's right. not going to be 100% symmetrical. Well, the Earth's surface is turning, causing yeah. day and night. 
So that's not the same as going around the sun. It's turning on its axis, tilted. Right. Yeah. So the north and the south will be symmetrical, It'll just have a certain angle of half of the earth lit up at once. So that means that the sun should go away and it should take the same amount of time in the north and the south. I, I've I never want, heard an I explanation want... except no, -uh, that's not true. And well, the explanation uh, is there's a lot of factors you're not taking into account there, right? Like the width of the earth because it's oblong slightly, that's like the tilt, the wobble. Like... There's a lot of different things that it's not just a ball moving perfectly, right? That's just 14 mile equatorial bowls that won't help us at all in the 33rd. I thought it was 42 miles. Well, 42 or 14, 14. 14 mile equatorial bulge of water, right? The earth is spinning, so it's bulging. Um, how come Africa is not underwater today? Is, is there land 14 miles high on the, on the equator, right? How come Africa is not uh, underwater? There's, an, an, there's an answer to that. I, I watched, uh, I, I saw like a back and forth on that whole thing. And it was speaking about the land and not the water. But again, I don't think we're qualified to answer that question. You, you do that a lot, Jason. You're not qualified to answer hey, the question. When I, you have gotten to ask you a question, that, Jason, you're, you're believing I'm going to ask you a question and before we get out of here. Like, yeah. Are you open to maybe the earth is in a globe and, I, and you could be wrong about I'm it? I'm open like to the us. earth being cheddar cheese in a triangle. Okay. So long as you show me, <laughs> so long as you show me not how it would work and yeah. you, okay. you can explain it, you can explain it very simply and show me how it does work. And before if, you go, go, go ahead, Jaron, and then I got, I got something. Well, I was just going to ask, like, if if it was just a deception, and then so you would have to wait until you have a better deception to to really start putting doubt into the globe. That's what you're saying, is that we would need to come up with a better story than the story told by the great mathematicians, 400 years of science. Uh, let me let me answer a different. Let me tell you guys why I personally believe it's a sphere, right? I don't care. You see, I don't even that, know all that. That was right? my question. Go ahead. Let, let, let's throw all that in the garbage. Let's throw school in the garbage. Let's throw everything in the garbage, right? Okay. At the end of the day, I think we can all agree over here. The majority of education is not education. It's indoctrination. I'm there with you guys on that. A hundred percent. It's literally sure. what, what, I do. I think it's what Aaron does as well. It's like, I'm so with you guys on that hundred percent. The reason why I personally still believe in that whole sphere model is because the beauty of how creation works shows that to me and not just what I can see in the macro, but also what I can see in the micro to me, a sphere before we go into formulas and all that, because we've just established, right? That formulas can show both sides and that's not enough proof. So I think there needs to be a mix between reason, logic, intuition, and going within. I'm, I'm a big like believer of we need to go within ourselves and equally look outside of ourselves and balance between the internal worlds and the external worlds. As long and to as we me, know just one second. Right? No, no, 100%. Right. Just to me, when it comes to that, number one, the, the, the shape of a sphere is not act to me it's not a shape it's the most perfect form because it's the closest thing to formlessness there is like light Oneness. when you shine when you shine a light it goes in all directions all the time so long as it's not coming out of a flashlight right when you have light coming out from a source it goes up down left right it goes in all directions yep. when we're going into when, when we're going into something like like space for example the way that i see it i was just scuba diving the other day i was in mexico over the weekend i took a little retreat and a break from everything that was going on and i went scuba diving we weren't even that deep we must have been 30 35 feet something like that not that deep and suddenly I realized that if I couldn't see the floor below me, the water level thing above me, or anything to my left or anything to my right, there is no up, down, left, or right. And to me, that sphere thing of we need to all stay in water. Up, I'm saying if you go 300 feet down in water, right? Technically, if you go 300 feet down in water, there becomes this feeling of if you can't see, anything to how come life. you can't really see the light 300 feet one down second there. one sec i know i'm just giving you a principle dude just oh just I you, you had this happen okay yeah no i'm i'm saying no i'm saying i realized this when i was about 30 feet underwater and the beauty of it because i was thinking about all of this as well over the past few weeks and what i realized was this whole up and down and water finding its level thing i realized for me that there is no level because there is nothing to compare it to in the vast openness of oneness. When there's oneness, there's no this and that. And if there's no this and that, there's nothing to travel between. There's no up, down, left, or right. 
So everybody's perception, yeah, when you zoom out and you say, you're up here and I'm down here, it's going to look like I'm upside down. But in reality, in the vastness of oneness and space, we're all level because level is not relative to anything outside of you in space. It's relative, in my opinion, to the center of that perfect shape of oneness. So that's how I came down to it. In addition to that, the as above, so below is beautiful. And I see it everywhere. I see spheres as the most perfect formless shape well, that there is. So why would God make it that than way? a flat circle? Geometrically, so it's not like a it's the most mode. stable shape. Why would why wouldn't the creator use the most stable shape available he did. to create planets? He did a tor a torus field. We live inside a torus field. It's called a block right. domain. And, and that's in one dimension of energy, but then there's another dimension of matter and physicality. And in the macro and the micro of that matter and physicality, it's spheres. The reason why I say that is because when I was nerding out when I was a kid and I had my telescope, the most beautiful things that made me cry all the time were looking at Jupiter, we're looking at the moon, we're looking at Saturn. You never saw any people Mars. there. Never saw say it again? People. No, you never saw people there. No. no I, I don't that, we're just assuming yeah, no. that there's that, that it's the same as Earth because they're round, so people can just live upside down and walk all over those. You but know, there the, is no upside down. That's what I'm saying. When you're in there's space, no upside it's down, like yeah. space, there is no up and there is no down. Everything is level based on the center of that sphere because electromagnetism has a point that it emerges. The out center, of it. yeah, it would work and, the same with and, electromagnetism. And electromagnetism and your torsion field emerges in all ways, just like light does. So do you guys so believe in, in that like way, the, the fabric of space of time or you, you dismiss that? Say it again. The fabric of space time or do you dismiss that idea? I, I don't know enough about it. I know a little bit about it with what Einstein was talking about and all that. So again, I, I don't even want to go there because I Jason, don't know enough about it. Jason, yeah. you're talking about stuff that is just theory. You're talking about, you know, space. Who so are you? No, we're talking about a lot of stuff here on Earth, right? And, and I saw in the chat, and I know uh, when you interviewed Ray, um, he said he saw Earth from space and it's a globe, right? But we showed you how everything looks tiny. And I always say, if you had a flat earther and a globe earther and we got in some sort of propulsion machine and we can get up high enough to leave this area, maybe there's no dome or whatever, um, the flat earther would see the Earth leave, leaving in the distance and the globe earther would see um, a globe leaving. For example, this is just off my screen here. You have this little planet. And if we zoom in on this planet, we get closer, we see that it's really just a flat earth with a light on it, right? And as you go away, it's horrible graphics, sorry, it looks like a sphere. So you have two different experiences. So if you believe that the earth is a globe and somehow you were flown high enough and far enough away, it would turn, that light would turn into a globe. You would see. We, we understand what you're saying well. with this point, Dave. But what we're yeah. saying is, we do affirm that the moon is a sphere, not a flat circle. Perfectly facing. I affirm facing. that the lights in my ceiling are spheres. And the moon okay, looks so, like it's plasma, bro. It just everything becomes a sphere. Like if you looked at light, it's going to be a circle. It's going to. But, have but that's the thing is, like, I still haven't gotten a satisfying answer to my question of why are those planets spheres and we're a flat disc? They're because just lights. Like, like any light is going to look. The moon like is a, a light. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever heard of lunar waves? Uh, yes, we've actually seen the moon, the moon wave like a plasma. So uh, consistently, so like a wave that goes across. Oh, the you're moon. talking about the videos where you see the high definition, like some of the best telescopes that exist that, that commercial. See, like I could just say that that's fake CGI. Like you say that the well, NASA yeah, videos or, are fake. Or, or it's just well, something well, that but we don't. I kind of glitching out and disappearing honest. from the screen. So, you know, <laughs> it's a little different. I mean, it's all good. I'm just saying, like, like those are. I know the person that took them. Those are definitely real, real telescopes. There's a lunar wave on the moon, and it's super. But weird. like that doesn't have to do with it being a sphere, right? Well, I just don't think it's solid. I mean, like, why would a solid have a wave go through it? I don't think it's solid either. I think it's hollow, and I think the Earth is too. I don't and think I it's think material. What, but why? Why during that when you see the moon in the day sky, there's blue behind the moon. You can see that the moon is within our system. And at night, the same thing. And when you watch the moon at night, um, when the clouds are going by, it lights up just the clouds that are near it. It doesn't light up the other ones that are across well, the sky. because The moon it's looks hazy during the day. The moon has a kind of a bluish haze over it because we're looking through the atmosphere. So yes, it looks like there's blue sky behind it and the moon is obscured. It's just an atmospheric effect. But when we, when we look yeah. at the moon during the day, um, oh, that's not what I want to show you. Um, it, 
it um where'd it go what about if we see a star through the moon what would that make you guys think say again what if you could see a star shine through the moon i'd be uh, i'd love to see it. that if there's yeah it looks like we can we've actually seen mars shine through the moon before what do you mean when you say through the moon what do you mean it's supposed to be transiting behind the moon and then you can see it, was it just the moon. for like a split second or for like a long time? Wasn't that relativity, what no, Einstein said? there for a while. Hmm. No. Einstein, that's no. what Einstein said about relativity is you can see objects that should be behind. Yeah. No, Nowhere close to like the transit in the middle no, of the moon. Are like, you, you're seeing yeah. Mars right in the center of the moon? So like just to the left of the Terminator in the center, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, here... I it was, it's, it's, I'll, find, I'll, I'll find the video. I don't know where I can send it. I'll send it to Dave or something. But and here is, here is a uh, here's a moon lighting up these clouds, kind of like it's very close to the clouds. Now, uh, now, this looks like it's right above the clouds. We say, well, if I go up an airplane, I go much higher than the clouds. I'll, go, I'll hit the moon. I think we see the moon in... Um, it's in perspective to where we are. As we move, the moon follows us. As we go up, the moon goes up. I think we well, the moon see- doesn't shine like the sun, though. It doesn't radiate powerfully like the sun. It has a small local amount of light reflecting. So, so that's why you're not going to see a giant area of light. So it's just lighting up these clouds here. How come it isn't lighting up Correct. just here? How come it's just the because ones? The, because the area of light the moon emits is much, much weaker than the sun. It has a so, small. So somebody radius over there is not going to see the clouds lit from the moon? Somebody over there is not um, going to see the clouds lit? Well, if the moon is a quarter of a million miles away, get get up, get a bunch of cotton balls, throw them on the floor, and get a flashlight. How are you going to light up just some of those, um, some of those cotton balls, or just a regular light? Well, get the, a light the moon's not a close. Flashlight. If you're close, you can. The moon it doesn't be, shine you, like a flashlight. The no, moon sort of glows. A, a, a light, it, the moon glows, unlike a dusty, dirty ball. It doesn't like shoot a beam a sing- of light out of it, right? Can I? Can I? Oh, I, it's I, reflecting. I'd love to sun. finish the sentence at one point. Okay. The moon is reflect is supposed to be reflecting light from a single source sun. Okay, there would be a hot spot and it would get dimmer towards the edge. But go look at a full moon; it's lit up equally, edge to edge, like it's its own light. You can't light up a sphere because you're claiming it's a sphere with a single. The moon source is light. its own light. The moon is its own light. We, so what happens Bible. during a full moon? Why can't you light up a, a whole sphere? It's a lesser light. Wait, wait, wait! What what happens during a new moon? Good question. The moon yes. goes through phases, and they get. Oh, yeah. How do you guys explain lunar eclipses? On a flat uh, it's, Earth just, model? It's, it's energetic cycles. Like uh, you can use polar lenses to show it, which is actually a paradox within the heliocentric paradigm. It's called the quantum paradox. You can show like polarization will cause that to happen. So yeah, and uh, if you ever seen the center of a magnetic field, the center of a magnetic field is black, and you can actually show the phases through that. So everything's electromagnetic. Anything the heliocentric model is claiming that's not electromagnetic is a joke to me because everything's electromagnetic. You can't heli- use it. Does the heliocentric centric model uh, say that anything is an electromagnetic? How can something not be yeah. electromagnetic? Well, <laughs> they can't. They they can't invoke electromagnetism to explain the model. And you say that everything is electromagnetic at the quantum level, at least. So technically, yes. What makes up everything? How, how, could, how could I get bigger and all of a sudden it not be what it is at the smallest scale, right? So that's why their theories are dumb to me. They can't even unify them. They'll never unify them because they can't admit there's an ether because an ether means the Earth's not moving and therefore quantum and the cosmology will stay separated forever until they accept that there's an ether. And they can't say there's an ether because it means the Earth's not moving, according to Michelson Morley experiment. I, so. I guess we don't have the same definition of ether. Yeah, it's it's like substantive medium that sustains all energy, and all energy comes from that. But yeah, so this, why this, does that make the Earth flat? Because if it's substance, no, well, it, may, it makes the Earth stationary. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah because why, why the, does that it, make it stationary? Because of the Michelson Morley experiment, they shot light perpendicular to each other and they used the direction of the earth going around the sun and mm. the light going against it was supposed to show a f- interference pattern, a fringe shift, and it didn't. So they're like, oh, there must be no ether um, or the earth is stationary. And that's when Einstein came in and proposed special relativity, electrodynamics on moving bodies, special relativity, 1905, and then general relativity, 1915. Basically right. to say that the apparatus contracted, you just can't tell. So it actually did travel further. You just can't tell because the apparatus contracted, but it looks the same and time slowed down and there is no ether, which no. So, so my understanding of that, so Mickelson did that experiment like 20 years or something before relativity. 
And yeah. what Einstein proved in relativity is that the speed of light is constant. So you shouldn't have seen different timings of the two laser beams or whatever that were shot, because no matter what speed you're moving at, no matter how you measure light, it's always the same 300,000 kilometers per second or whatever they say it is. Yeah, even with that, though, if you're moving greater distances, it's going to take a greater time. Speed equals distance over time. So if the speed's the same, and it's going a greater distance. It takes a longer time. So they had to say that time slowed down, time dilation, and that the, the apparatus contracted. You just can't tell, which is called length contraction, Lorentz length contraction. And this is the model to this day. They claim that time slows down. And if you travel the speed of light, then you'll experience timelessness and that matter contracts when it moves. You just can't tell because you're contracting with it. So that that's what Einstein, Einstein said out of his own mouth. Like that's why he came up with relativity. I, I am speaking of time. I am running out of, I'm, I'm very over time. So we'll go to the last big picture question that I think everybody always asks. So like, what do you guys believe is, I guess, the motive, the purpose why flat? Forget about the science. Let's go to like the, the things behind it. Why do you think it's being hidden? Um, well, first, I think we have some psychopaths at the top. Obviously, we've seen that play out over the last couple of years who want control, who want um, slaves. And I think that throughout history, when people were put under heavy amounts of tyranny, um, they left, right? That's what you could do. You'd get up and you leave. So what do you do when people are keep leaving and you don't want them to leave anymore? You encircle them on a globe and say, if you go that way, you'll just come back to where you started and go that way, you'll come back to where you started. There's nowhere else to go, nothing else to discover. And now we all sit here in this country and we are subjected to the slavery that's um, all around us. And, you know, you've got people in charge of the dollar, the dollar has no value. So, I mean, all that stuff together uh, tells me that they're going to keep whatever story they have to tell to keep people lost, confused. Um, you know, there's no way the Rockefellers got together and said, Oh, let's, uh, Let's teach all these students how to be the smartest they can be so that they can come take our money and power. It's the opposite of that. They sat around and said, how do we keep these people dumb and how do we keep them? So if you teach them a wrong cosmology to think that they're like, well, let's tell them the truth about space and how far everything is, then we'll lie about everything else to me is insane. It would be the other way around. They would be able to start with the open slate, which is space and tell whatever story they wanted to uh, from there. So that's my opinion is that it's just a control mechanism. And if there is more land, there's probably civilizations that left the Mayans, maybe Captain Cook, maybe they, they left and they're not going to come save us because this is an enslaved area. They don't want to be anywhere near here. So they're uh, out probably uh, living the good life and maybe even moving technology along and, and we're here stuck. So Austin, you want to take the second response to that question? Yeah, sure. I mean, you pretty much crushed it. I think that uh, if the earth is in the center of everything, it makes this place very majestic and special, and I understand your guys' position that basically it is anyway, right? Because the universe is still like beautiful, or whatever. But if the Earth's in the center of the whole universe or cosmos, that's a very special thing. And uh, I think when people know that there's this like a metaphysical power that comes with that, if they know that the Earth is special, their life is special, they're a powerful entity that can manifest things. There's an ether, everything's tied together with the same energy. These are really big truths that if everyone knew it, we, they'd be in trouble, right? I mean, you probably wouldn't even have a utility bill and we would take our power back. So I think that just the overall nature of, of the energy that surrounding this place in this position, it allows, lying about that allows people to be like nihilist and not realize how powerful they are. I think they're insignificant, just be based on material. Uh, and that's what I think the biggest part of the deception is, and Jaren named the rest, right? I mean, they're hiding land. They're keeping us limited here. If there's more resources, more places to go. But I think it's much deeper. I think it's like, they don't want you to realize that there's an endless amount of energy all around you that can be tapped into um, and that the earth is in the center and very special. So that's what I think. Why don't right. we go to Dave and then Aaron, and then we'll close it up. Yeah, so those guys basically said uh, said that they're hiding the, your true power. They're trying hiding where you are. They're getting you lost in space. And when you're lost in space, you're afraid of asteroids. You're afraid of nuclear bombs. You're afraid of running out of food. Running, just everything could go wrong. Um, they're they're diluting the creator. They're making you feel um, insignificant and powerless, right? But when you understand that you're at the center of creation. Uh, you then take your power back and you're no longer a controllable slave, right? They have you fantasizing in planets that are so far away, ridiculousness is, you know, like we can never go to other planets. And why would we go to Mars when we could just build domes on over in Ethiopia? We have air there, we have water there. We could even run trains there for supplies, but we want to go to Mars and try to terraform it. 
It's absolute insanity. But how would they hide it? And here's the thing. You can hide. You can't put a human in a fence, no matter how big the fence is. So here's just a little thing I like to speculate. Here's a globe. Here's a here's a, a map. Right. And let's say we cut it out here. We got a little bit of South America. I got Mexico in there, Jason. So don't worry. We got rid of the rest of the map and we wrapped it around a sphere and we told everybody, hey, this is where you live and you can't go anywhere else. This is all that there is. And uh, you're not allowed to explore this white dot. Uh, there's no such thing as Australia or Africa or Europe, and there's no boats or planes. How would you know that there's more land out there? OK, so now if we take this to a bigger scale, now this is just a possibility. You know, um, what if the world was a set of ponds? Right. I call our world a world pond. What if we lived in the center of this pond right here? We have our own local sun. We live here. This is just a what if. Right. And we the controllers cut out. Right. We take our, our map, we wrap it around a sphere and we say, you're not allowed to explore south. South is down here. Right. You're not allowed to explore here and not, you're not even allowed to question it. And all the countries in the world agree to that. And this they agree on two things. You're in a prison. This is a prison for your mind. If they can control your mind and stop you from thinking beyond the borders that, that, that they put around you, they can control you. OK, but our thoughts create our reality. Aaron, you know this. Jason, you know that. Right. Our thoughts create a reality. And if they can keep our thoughts in fear and limited and keep us physically sick, mentally sick, spiritually sick. Right. And, and cast all of their spells on us. That's why. Right. The why is the biggest thing ever. And I just tell people, if you want to if you want to learn more. Um, go to flatearthdave.com. There's great videos there. Or if you want to get my app, it's uh, it's it's great. Just go read the reviews on the app and don't get it. But in the app, on the frequently asked questions page, there's a button called Why the Lie right there. Why the Lie? Click that, watch that, then you'll know. And once you know, you'll become like us. You'll be like, wow, I know that I don't know lots of things but I know that the earth is not a spinning ball flying through scientifically impossible space. I know that there is no curvature. I know when I think I see curvature, what I'm actually seeing. I know why buildings disappear from the bottom up. I know lots of things because we were never taught these things. So again, that's, um, that's where, listen, nobody should walk away from this going, Oh my God, the earth is flat. You should walk away going, this guy's made up some interesting points. I got a lot of research to do, but here's the problem. Belief is the enemy of knowing. Belief is easy. It takes no effort. You can believe. I, Jason, I believe you went scuba diving in Mexico last week. All right. I, no, I'm done. I can go. I'm going to go to sleep. Right. If I wanted to learn, I'd have to find out. I have to, you know, research. You know, oh, look, he took a picture and I could do, I could take some time and, and energy and find out. Yeah, you did go scuba diving, but I don't need to do that because it's easier to be lazy. You want to learn the truth. You got to take the time and effort. This is a stream that hopefully will wake up some people to actually do the work. But if you try Googling it, you're going to just go right down into a trap. And that trap should wake you up if you, if you use your common sense. We're not scientists, thank God, because scientists are the most brainwashed ones of all. Aaron, you want to go for it? Woo! <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, Jason and I obviously agree with a lot of what you guys are saying in terms of the the condition our world is in, the level of corruption and secrecy and all of that. But, um, you know, I could make all the same arguments, and I, in fact, I do make all the same arguments against Flat Earth being a control mechanism for the mind. And, we, you know, we kind of did this the whole uh, live, right, where we just volley back and forth and say opposite things. But like um, when Jaron said, why would they lie to you about everything in school and then tell you the truth about space? Well, they don't lie to you in school. They just don't teach you the important things you need to know. They teach you unimportant things. And maybe some things are lies, I'm, I'm sure. But like they teach you stuff that doesn't really apply to real life. They don't teach you how to use money, how to open a trust, how to do taxes, how to take loans out, how to navigate in the world we live in. They want, it, they want you to be a good cog in the system, right? A good worker. So in the same way, it's like, these people are very smart and they don't just lie constantly to our face because they know we're going to figure out if they're lying to us all the time. Uh -huh. They tell us a lot of truths and they disguise certain things for, for the purposes of deception. So to me, it's like, why would, why would every scientist in the world, every astronomer in the world all be in on this lie that we're they're not in on, on a flat, they're, they're we're on a flat it. disc, but really it's, we're on a globe, but really it's a flat disc. We just don't want to tell them because we need to control them. It's like, clearly we're going to figure out, we already have commercial space flights happening. Like we're going to figure out the shape of the earth. 
And if it was flat, we would know that they lied to us and lose all trust in the system. Like these people don't take risks that great. They, they hide their lies very cleverly. And to me, flat earth just says, Hey, the whole universe is a conspiracy. Everything in existence is a lie. And to me, the creator has implanted, like Jason said, archetypal laws that we see within as so without. Um, we didn't really get to jam on this too much, but to me, flat earth violates the laws of metaphysics more than anything. Um, one of those laws being the law of vibration. And I know you guys are probably big fans of Tesla. And as you know, Tesla said, if you want to understand the universe, you have to think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And Tesla went on to say, everything in the universe is in motion. Everything is vibrating, spiraling, however you want to put it. And so a flat, motionless disk immediately violates the law of vibration that says everything is in motion. And I could go on and give three or four metaphysical principles beyond that. But for me, it's more of the spiritual side of things that it's, it just creates such a limited, unimaginative universe compared to the infinite one that we actually live in. And I just don't find it to be empowering in any way. I find an infinite universe, a fractal universe that speaks to my inner power being infinite. And the flat earth universe to me personally, and I respect all your guys' opinions here on, on the panel, it's just a very limited, unempowering universe to be living in compared to the one we actually live in. You know, and so atheism to- has come along because of the globe earth, because of the, because of the age of the earth, because of the, all that stuff. You said atheism? Yeah, it's what brought, there wasn't a lot of atheists in 1500, 1600. It's yeah, see, that's the- like another, another thing that always, my flat earth friends always say is like, when I get them back to, but why flat earth? Like, why this big conspiracy? It's always to disprove the Bible. They want to disprove the Bible and God's law. And to me, that's just not a convincing argument because I grew up as a Christian, as a pastor's kid. I know the Bible very well. I think it's a very divine book, but I don't think it's a perfect infallible book. And I have no problem believing in a, in a spherical earth model, right? So I don't think that the Bible or religion is a good enough reason to have this grand conspiracy, which, by the way, do you, do you I don't really see a profit model either in lying about the shape of the earth. And if you look at any conspiracy, uh-huh. the vaccine, you name it, always, it goes back to money. Someone's trying to make profit. And maybe you guys have a good argument for that, but I don't see money to be made the in space lying industry about the the space industry is bigger than hollywood bigger than home box office bigger than music bigger than video games combined that's how but they don't is. make money they get money from the government and they don't use that money to go to space they fake space right it's all it's all black ops and things like right. that. right we didn't even get into this well, what, what, like, what i, what I will say <laughs> back to the I religious can, question. Wait, no, we're doing let me just we're, ask him one question because i wanted to say what you said so you if we're talking about the religious nature of it, you don't think that there's scientists that hate the idea of religion completely and totally that they would do anything? Yeah, no doubt. So that, I mean, that is the deception. I mean, look at what Edwin Hubble said. Edwin Hubble but there's said, tons of religious scientists as well. Not really. It's, it's, not, it's not really what I'm not saying. Really. But not, maybe it, not as many as the non-religious, but there's just, plenty. Just so we're on scientists. the same page, the heliocentric model was opposed by religious leaders when it first came out that's the story but or now either. the people that push it literally say that if the earth was in the center it would mean there's a god and we hate that idea the earth can't be special or unique that's what they say so it's earth's definitely unique, flipped but it's not special right and they were okay. teaching flat earth here in the ni- mid 1900s i we've interviewed people that were taught flat earth in public school here in the mid 1900s they they literally flipped it in like the 1940s and 50s um, where they started taking the uh, the um, the Gleason's map out of the libraries, out of the school books, they stopped teaching it. They were teaching it here into the mid 1900s and across the earth. And then they changed the story, and then Aristophanes' story popped up out of nowhere, and his story doesn't prove anything. And do you guys agree NASA is at least deceptive, right? Like NASA is not the one federal government agency that every aged. government agency is corrupt. Absolutely, right. So, but but like within, I have, we, yeah. Go ahead, go Jason. I was going to say within corrupt agencies, like all of them, like, like, you know, the FBI, the CIA, still NASA, plenty of all good of people. that, there's still good, not everybody is in on it because that's not evil's not. So no, no, no one thinks that it can deceive you about the nature that. of the whole universe. Yeah. And I don't know. They don't think all scientists and teachers and professors, yeah. are, they're all in on it. No, they're not. They're the ones that memorize the right. Rockefeller textbooks the best. They're the ones that look up at the lights in the sky and go, oh, that's 30 million light years away. And it burned out a hundred million years ago. You know, 
And one teaspoon of a neutron store weighs 10 million tons. Yeah. You know, I mean, like that's 20 that's billion that pounds. Theoretical <laughs> nonsense versus the flat earth, which is scientifically possible. Right? The I globe mean, earth, again, no curvature, no spinning, no <laughs> high pressure next to low pressure. It can never be proven, right? It can never be proven. I mean, I've People seen it be proven in a way that satisfies me. I'll just say that. I, I've, I've, I still haven't seen a flat earth argument that is satisfying to me. They go, oh, wow, that really... It what's really your number one my circuits earth? on the spherical what, earth what's your you're open one? to it what, yeah, what's i'm totally open reason? to it man i truly yeah. am like i'm in on every conspiracy you can name but right. i just don't see aaron, aaron evidence. has series like, aaron has series, whole series on all guys about conspiracies. <laughs> that's cool that's cool aaron, yeah. you wanna you He'll should do austin does a show with uh with it's one-on-ones if you should uh set up a show with them i think it'd be great that could be fun yeah, I'm down. I'm down. I just can't really hang with the mathematics and stuff because it's not something that uh, I spend cool. my time. I even like. I even want to talk to you about the part that you're like the fractal aspect of it. Because yeah. Because I think that you may see it once you see it. You will think of flat Earth differently. It seems. I'm not saying you'll just totally switch over it. and it, yeah. It, there's a there's a like, very deep fractal aspect of it that blew my mind personally. So. I'm a, I'm open to that for sure. But like like I mentioned, the law of vibration, the law of one. This is another metaphysical principle that to me flat Earth violates. In that you say Earth is the one special planet that's different. Well, one that says nothing is special, more special than anything else. Everything is equally the creator. So why do we have this one special planet? You know, it sounds like an egocentric well, kind of thing. Well, it's not a planet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I well, flat planet, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Everything can be literally the same. Like a banana is not the same as an apple. I mean, yeah. No, no, no. Well, the, same the same in energy. value, the same in value and worth, spiritually speaking, right? If we're the only, if everything else is just to be our entertainment or whatever, and we're the one and only special planet, there's no what, other beings out there. What if, what if Maybe this those is things our, in the, li- in the light pond, and are beings? And then these are other pieces of the plane, which we'll call planets, right? These are the other planets across the flat earth. Right. Okay, Maybe what this is, is our expansive worlds. These are all of the other worlds that you want to pretend are out there. Well, they could be just out across the plane. Right. This could be Earth. Oh, right. And not, we're just trapped yeah. in here. <laughs> not vibing, man. <laughs> but, but but you're you're gonna vibe on 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 planets orbiting burning balls of gas in a space vacuum. Because we well see nuclear it. fusion, but yeah. Uh, nuclear fusion, balls of gas, gas that somehow collapsed upon itself, leaving a void right. in between. Somehow, they all they, 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 they all the gases said, "You know what? Screw filling the space. We're just going to turn into little balls, and we're going to burn, and we're not going to we're not going to change our mass, and and then other rocky balls are going to stick around us at distances which you couldn't see them. If you bothered to do the math, you'd realize you can't see Polaris at a light." two years away or light year away or light month away. You couldn't see it, but they tell us it's 433 light years away and you could see it with your naked eye. You're not thinking. No one's thought, no one thinks about this. No one thinks about light. Spread I, I do, light. man. I do think okay. about it. We just you know about the inverse square law of light. It spreads out as light goes out. It gets thinner and thinner and thinner, like blowing up a balloon. It gets thinner and thinner and thinner. So how does light travel 433 light years and still be a focus point of bright light in the sky? How come they're all at the same distance? How come all of the stars are? Because those are the rays the that are hitting us on directly. Right. The other rays are spreading out like this, so they're not concentrated. Oh, so, so that, the rays that, that are hitting so, us directly are concentrated. But no, no, wait. Which so, is why the seasons change because of the angle of the earth so, and all so, that. So a ray, let's say that ray is the thickness of a pin. Well, that pin is going to spread out, okay? How thin does it have to be to make it all the way to earth where it's spreading out? It's spread, every time you double the distance, it's a quarter of the brightness. It's a quarter of the amount of photons. You're not doing the math. When you realize that you could not see anything a light year away, let alone 433 light years away. And the no fact- No matter that, how big it is? No matter how big it is, okay? No matter the, how big it is. Well, you can make something the big, you know, like the, the, we, we did the measurements with Betelgeuse, which makes the sun look like a, a fleck of dust, okay? Um, it doesn't make any sense. And then somehow- It does like, to well, me. I want, Aaron, I want, you, I want you to go out tonight- <laughs> And uh, find a spot in your yard or wherever and take a picture at a certain angle at whatever time, mark it in your calendar. And then next year, same night, same time, go out, take the same picture. And every single star will be in the exact same position. Every, none of them uh, will have moved at all. And then you could do that till the day. Well, you I'd, have to, I'd have to measure none of them, them to will know move. For sure, no, no, no. Right? First of all, you're, you're, you're 100% right. And there's nothing wrong with yeah. that because 
again, when a train moves, this is my take on it. When a train moves at 50 miles an hour and you have a whole system moving together with it, then it's going to be a, a galaxy. The galaxy together. rotates there, as one There is unit. a speed to the galaxy. It's 130, 130 miles per second or something like that. So the, there's this so-called, according to that model, right? There's the speed of earth. Then there's the speed of the solar system. Then there's a the speed of the galaxy. And again, that's to me, the macro and the micro and the micro all reflecting itself. So listen, I, I, this I'm is what's literally... going on. <laughs> this is what's going on. Hey, Aaron, you have my app. Go to the why the lie and go to, look at some of the other FAQ questions and just spend a little time. Watch one video a day while you're having your breakfast, right? Yeah, we, we watched the three Flat Earth documentaries. Okay, well, those, those, um, those are documentaries. Level, level with me. And let me yeah. And... Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Th those are those are made by one one type of film. There's other scientific stuff. Like if you go in the app and you hit the web button, right, and um, you scroll down to flat Earth um, experiments, lots of great stuff there. Or if you hit the homeschool button, and you go and uh, here's Austin's schooling globers right here, amazing, amazing stuff. There's so many resources in here and. All the questions that you have can be answered in there. And you, you could just check it out. Don't just blindly believe. Take the time and effort to look. Absolutely. So right. big, big picture, just to, to bring this to a close, that question that I asked all of you, I just wanted to hear what everybody you know, had to say. And I do want to say specifically with uh, Austin, Jaron, and David, I agree with probably 99 Point nine percent of everything that you guys said in terms of there's a lot of issues in this world. I speak about them all the time. I interview people about them all the time. I'm with you hundred percent. To me, I personally don't see the disempowerment or the prison that you guys are painting. I see how you can paint it. So I do want to say, I see your side. I don't not see your side. I definitely see the perspective. Just let me finish. I personally don't, I, I don't like agree with it because it doesn't make sense to me. It makes a lot more sense to me to have this expansive, limitless thing that keeps on going forever and it's beautiful. And I think that's very special. I think that's gorgeous. I think that's amazing. I don't think it makes us not special with the whole center of, uh, of earth being the center. There's actually in religions, if you wanna to go to religion for a second, started with Judaism and it continued from there with a stone called the foundation stone. In Hebrew, they call it Evan Ashtia. The foundation stone, if you look into it, which I highly recommend everybody watching to look into it because it's, it's a beautiful thing in terms of what they say happened over there is now, not just where the Western wall is, the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, but it's actually where the Dome of the Rock is. So they call it the Dome of the Rock because the dome, which is now a mosque obviously, is built over this massive rock called the foundation stone. And the reason why it's called the foundation stone or in Hebrew, Evan Ashtia, the reason why it's one of the most powerful energetic vortexes on this planet is because they believe that this, like the, the, the spirit world, so-called the intangible penetrated matter and became matter from that point. And in that way, that makes earth the very central point of creation as we know it. But to me, that doesn't make earth the physical center of everything where everything revolves around us. I, from everything that we've seen, and again, I'm, I'll, I'll keep going down this rabbit hole. I think it's going to be an interesting journey over the next two years. Um, but big picture, I do believe that the earth holds the energetic center of the universe of where creation emerged out of. And I don't call that the big bang. I think you're a, a flat earther in the making. He's coming, he's coming I, along. I, I, yeah. I, I think, welcome, I think that's a bunch of nonsense, welcome a to bunch of earth. nonsense. And I think that the whole big bang thing is a way for people to try to explain something they can't explain. I haven't, let another, me finish. There's a, let me finish. Let me finish. There's, there's a limitless energy to everything in this universe. I don't believe that there's a beginning and I don't believe there, there is an end. As a matter of fact, forget belief. Let's go to knowing this. We know that there's no beginning and there's no end. And in that way, sure, you can call something the emergence point of creation as we know it, but I don't think you can call anything the center of something that's infinity because the center would have to be bordered in terms of here and there. So again, 
I'm not a scientist. I can't come up with formulas and all that. But I agree with everything that you guys said in terms of the motive. I don't see why making it flat would be, oh, we're going to you know, trap you over here. Because just like that, they're still telling us that we could now in the future, right, have these ships and go to other places. So they're not trying to contain it, according to the narrative. Well, that, that's the story that they're telling you. There's a Jaron made a great video called NASA going nowhere since 1959. And it basically mm -hmm. shows you how everything they promised, you just keep kicking down the road, kicking down the road. But a great place to learn more about this. Jaron and Austin are holding a summit, a virtual summit on, on uh, the 23rd, uh, 22nd and 23rd of this month. Uh, 23rd, 23rd, 23rd and 24th. 23rd and 24th of this month, virtual summit. It's amazing. You can find all the information at flatearthdave.com. There's a big banner there. Click there. And if you use my code DITRH50, you get half off and it's a great deal. Um, and then you'll you'll learn some things, and not just not just flat Earth. I, I believe you guys have some health stuff going on there. Yeah, ter terrain theory. Uh, oh yeah, electric be, culture, be, a lot of stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, be careful with what you say next. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, I I know. Okay, cool. Check, check it out. I give you the, 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 the easiest place to find everything. FlatEarthDave.com. There's a giant banner at the top. Click it. Read about it, check it out, come to the summit. It's amazing. And it's a great, it's a great time. And you meet some great people. Virtual awesome. doctors, well done two on, doctors well, on the on the register. I think you know? I yeah. think the most important thing, like we started this, is again, it's not about, and, and I really wanted to show that also. It's not about one side or another. And and it's it's not about right or wrong here. Like Dave, we'll talk tomorrow. I never spoke to Austin and Jaron. So Hopefully, you know, we could chat in the future and still stay in touch. And if you guys can keep sending me things and maybe sending Aaron things, let us know so you guys can inform us of other things. Because I'm personally curious whether I agree with it or not, I really don't care about. Mm -hmm. I'm curious of what other perspectives are just to see psychology. To me, this is a big social experiment. One way or another, it doesn't matter. I see this as psychology. How does the human psyche work? Where does all of this come from? That's always fascinated me since I was a kid. So that's where I'm personally at. Aaron, if you want uh, any closing, sta closing statements over there as well, please take them. But I just want to say, I love you all. I respect you all. I do still have my beliefs. I will say that, and I have no problem saying it. And I'm, I mean, we can, we stay just as we are, you know, it's in terms of that doesn't mean that we have to distance ourselves from each other or call each other anything. And this is a message to everybody because I see a lot of people <laughs> like cursing at each other on, on, on social media and all that. Oh, it's yeah. all good, you know? Like, that's really not gonna bring us anywhere. If we wanna get anywhere, we need to do it with love. It's, it's the most important 100%. thing. That we need to do it with love because without that, it's just gonna, it's just gonna cause more division. Well, for everybody reasons. was like so, you, we'd be a lot further along. The problem is there's a whole <laughs> group of people. I want, I want 100%. to, right. I really, I do want to thank you guys for being, you know, cool and, and just cool throughout the whole thing. It's, it's not something that I see often with that rabbit hole that I've been going down in the community. So I just want to tell you guys, I really respect you guys and the way that you hold yourselves and thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I echo the same thing. I, I appreciate your guys' time and having this really fun conversation with us. Um, you know, I don't really have a big dog in the fight of what the shape of the earth is. It's, it's fun to talk about, but to me, it's like, ultimately none of it really matters because whether the earth's round or flat, because we're all children of God, God's in control of God's universe. And the, the truth doesn't need to be defended, right? We'll find out at some point, but what's true is love, right? And you guys are in my eyes, divine brothers. And uh, I love you guys. And honestly feel like we'd probably have a, a lot of fun jamming on other topics that I think we probably agree on a whole I think lot. We have we most things on. in common, actually. Right. Probably sure. 99% yeah. of things like, in common. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. So yeah. Probably. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Well, we'll be in touch again. Remember for everybody over here, I could put some links in the description below. If uh, Austin, Jaron and David, you guys send them to me, Aaron, I'll put your YouTube link below as well. And let's all be in touch and keep it going. Thank you guys. Excellent. I appreciate your time and I appreciate everybody that came on to watch. Peace and love. Peace. Peace.